Dreaminating. Begin the transmission. Just uh, paste it on the... Um... Let's see. Oh, something is not liking it. What's not liking it? Okay, well, it is live. It says, oh, dropped frames. Why are we dropping frames? Is it the Wi-Fi? That's horrible. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's not too good. I thought we have a decent internet. We might have to uh, reboot the internet. Reboot the internet! <laughs> Is that a Dr. Evil scene? Uh, it could be. There's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a few uh, references that come to mind. Huh. Just remember that woman, one of her, one of his hench, yeah, yeah. henchmen. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had a song with Doctor Evil. That's uh, who uh, Seth Green right, is. Yeah. Seth Green is. Yeah. Okay, this is completely. And he's like, I like, you know, if you paid more attention to me, I would have been a better son, but I don't like you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right, he's like, zip it, zip it. Okay, so we are we've stopped dropping too many frames, which is good. Good, very good. So now we go pop out the chat, grab a D link, throw it in here. Boom. Chat appears. Go and filter that. So hopefully Ian doesn't get his monitor destroyed again. What happened? With high contrast. See this black line? Yeah. That was right beside the white of the spreadsheet. So that I didn't hear it from him to say that, but I'm assuming because when you get high contrast, you can get image retention on certain OLED monitors and shit like that. So huh. if I go 30, I can just scrape that off the side of the window. And now it's not here anymore. So it's not as high a contrast point. Okay. Yeah. And okay. where is our link? Share. The share button. This is where you have to get it. Imagine that. Copy link. Do, 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 do. Uh, Organizational dynamics continued. What will be the uh, the title of title of this dev meeting? Is it? St are we still within guild organizational dynamics? Where do we want to go with this? And no, we we're going to into agile economics. We're going to agile economic computation. Uh, Agile computational economics. We're covering industry, we're covering economics, and we're covering uh, com Com computation. Computational right. economics. <laughs> All right. Heck yeah. Okay. Save that. Good. And I'll set up my monitor. Turn back. Yep. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, good volume. Very good. As you can hear. We've got about a 15 second do, 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 do. delay. 20 second. Uh, yes, good volume.
Alright, welcome back peoples. This is probably week five or six, I'd imagine. <clears throat> Looking good. So this is meeting seven. Nice. Meeting seven. Come on, yep. Come on. And the. Are you? Are you being self-conscious? Whatever. You're doing. You could very shove over a tiny bit or whatever. I don't know. Let's see the other one. How's it looking? Good. I have to be seen. Looking good, buddy. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Move that down a little bit. Perfecto. Yep, don't do that. Don't do that on live YouTubes. <laughs> okay, so yeah, nice meeting series. Uh, I didn't get around to doing the table of contents for the last three meeting parts. In the very last meeting part, however, um, as we were just discussing, um, we were talking about Agile economics. We were talking about the um, different corporations or a corporate structure, um, the different types of products to meet uh, demand. Um, and it turned out to be more of a workshop. So this is just a, a note, the, which as we spoke, as I recall, uh, when we were talking about it, it didn't seem like it was really going anywhere. And that's kind of what it seemed like it had happened. Um, but this is the nature of just exploring and doing what we do. Um, it's always been like this, pretty much. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Not every session is a success. Yep. But we just kind of, um, after the fact, usually things kind of settle in and you're thinking, you think over it again, and then you kind of take the treasure, take the gold, whatever is good, and uh, roll with that. Um, keep progressing along. Just reiterate. <clears throat> yep. Yep, so it was a good uh, good exercise, and... Uh, yeah. The main takeaway is actually just a fundamental um, core product structure and the uh, four, mm -hmm. four involved dashboards uh, yeah. around that. So we did, get, we did get to articulate that much, at least, and then we kind of, you could say, got a little bit off track, but... Yeah, this is where everything um, went wrong. The interesting part about that is you could say, okay, it never goes wrong, but it went in such a an articulated way, which seems reflective of now what we're thinking in this moment right now. Like we were um, just discussing about like um, 12, 12 different, you know, sub corporations and 16 products and like it kind of all seems to be... Yeah, taking it to a different level, a uh, different kind of abstraction. Um where each corp, each of these uh, twelve, well, so each meta product has has four corporations involved. There's four products, so therefore there's twelve um, meta corporations, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and each one is represents a, a kind of a person, which uh, if we look back into into the demand and supply idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, each person has demands, so we're looking at the the, uh, the how to formulate it in those terms, such that eventually, when uh, you um, meet somebody's demand by a supply, when you're looking at the demands of that supplier, it's being met by one of the existing um, mm -hmm. uh, corporations. So sort so of a self-referential mesh that just comes yeah folds back on itself yeah and so closing the loop and that basically is the idea of, of how it needs to um, how it needs to develop and so we didn't reach mm -hmm. that point unfortunately and uh, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, just uh, the approach that we took that time uh, so mm -hmm. we're gonna reiterate that yep. structure uh, over the next few weeks probably and get that solidified but that's right. not the focus of our, our focus today. We're not doing a workshop. We are backtracking to the core, um, the co 
the, the core uh, industry uh, infrastructure and moving on from there to make a few other points regarding guild dynamics and mm -hmm. move on from there. Yeah, so we tried to put together like a bit of an agenda, but who knows where it's going to go and uh, where, the, where the questions will lead us exactly. Um, but we have this we have this structure where we're, we're trying to uh, shed light on the, the the structures of the economy so when you're talking about um, the idea of, of the guild um, where you're having um, people skilled in certain domains and um, everybody is, has their own kind of specializations um, which means that people all kind of depend on each other in certain ways and this is how society is built uh, we don't all have to hunt for food and all this kind of stuff we we, we trade we have machinery um, for it increasingly yeah machinery and in, including human machinery um, yeah Pro, um, like uh, machinery in terms of uh, uh, process like go to this um, mm -hmm. Go to this uh, yeah, you agency can have, uh, to do this. Go to that agency to do that. And having a whole potentially a chain of of um, economic interactions leading to products becoming available here and there to meet meet demand. Mm. Um, My monitor is stopped. Cool. So yeah, that that's kind of like the gist of why we're interested in this um, agile economics. Um, it has it has really a lot to do with how do we interact with each other as a culture as a society um, and the environment yeah and how can we do it in a more intentional way in a way um, without um, without that runaway the breakaway civilization sort of process where you have um, bad actors greedy actors or otherwise just people ignorant uh, don't know how to uh, essentially get along with each other and and uh, you kind of default to this sort of competitive mode um, which Self -preservation is a, sort of a state of decay right like we all kind of know that society could be better and a lot of people try to put this on the shoulders of government and say okay well you know like the idea of communism and that kind of stuff like where the government can just do everything and give, give you everything right uh, we're kind of taking the approach that that those ideas of that something bigger should actually exist within the individual and that and that we should be able to navigate uh, the economy in a very regular ways uh, in very transparent ways uh, taking advantage especially of uh, new technologies of uh, ideas like the web of trust uh, which can be augmented with cryptography and all that kind of stuff so we're talking about a really a massive type of structure and we're talking about the kernel of how you how you how that unfolds it unfolds from a very specific kernel which we call the model um, which is this understanding of like how perception works and and uh, mastery of the self and all this kind of stuff and the, how that unfolds into a greater structure when uh, masters work together or members work together as we'd say members of the guild um, mastery yeah. of membership sure yep yeah, right teaching others how to uh, how to become members um, so. yeah so and that this I guess gets into the idea of um, okay so how do we actually regulate ourselves um, what are how do, we, how do we approach different domains different problem domains different facets um, we were talking about the um, the ego agent matrix diagram last time that's that's going to be a big a big part of this um, yeah, it, it involves a lot of uh, modeling what happens in that uh, particular space. Right, and exactly. Bringing that, to the light, bringing that to light, really. Yeah, that and that's kind of one major idea is, is that although some people don't have any care or interest to uh, more formally model the, the domains of behavior that they're participating in, um, some people very much do and it, within the context of like a corporation or any organization all you need are a few people who have this kind of mindset to bring this this type of order into the interaction um, 
not everybody has to be writing protocols or doing uh, process flow charts and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's actually not useful to have everybody do the same thing because um, right. um, past that there needs to be actually a conversation about what those uh, things mean, whether they are meaningful to begin with, and none of it has to do with who has made what. Like the the only real criteria is is, is whether it fulfills uh, um, some sort of uh, initiative, and whether it fulfills it well or mm-hmm. not. Um, right. It's it's a very impersonal um, uh, ordeal. You know, we're, uh, the problem solving domain isn't about who gets credit for um, solving it in the first place. Right. <coughs> and so the initiative can be something like nobody seems to know what they're doing in this part of our company. Right. So that that's a problem domain you want to to have somebody who is familiar with it to be and uh, who wants to try mapping it out yeah step so forward and, and do that yeah you, you, you initially try to outline um, what's going on what should be going on and what the differences are, are. Um, which mm-hmm. is which is actually exactly what the model um, that we've been discussing all along is, is doing in the first place it's uh, mm-hmm. right back to the conversation and the original video when we're talking about Memeplex, the um, differentiation of it into the archetype, the proximity complex, we are literally talking about the exact same um, situation in which... uh We have a comment. (laughs) Cohen is uh, excited that Dad made a video. (laughs) I did. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's exactly in the same uh, realm. Um, I lost my train of thought on that one. Yeah, I was just, I wanted to mention that this, and this is kind of a big picture comment, but, and again, I just, I kind of mentioned it, but the idea that, that we want to have um, the, the, a, a greater potentiality um, built into the individual who wants that to, to, <coughs> to be able to help manage overall the structure of an organization and to better interact within that organization and if you have enough people who are capable of doing this kind of a thing your organization automatically becomes way more intelligent way more intelligent than any kind of like single singular top-down uh, concentrated management structure could ever hope to to achieve well uh, um, just a comment on that and this is just out of the blue hearing you talk um, mm-hmm. When you have a top-down organization, what happens is that you don't uh, have communication. Uh, information is uh, filtered, mm-hmm. and what you get is the broken telephone. So, if somebody at the top says something, then what has been said and what has been understood are two different things. Whereas, um, if everybody is actually directly peering, mm-hmm. um, then if you say something and I hear it, and this person hears it, then you can't go back and say, I didn't say it. It's, that's just uh, uh, the relationship of this web of trust um, where if uh, an action takes place, there's an accountability involved. And <clears throat> without the removal with, with the removal of this whole chain of um, broken telephone of who said, of, of, of transmitting what has been said over um, individual agents with their own agendas, often driven uh, with their own purposes and egos on top of why it's being said in the first place. Mm. Um, yeah, the lack of transparency, the lack of... Um, right, and that happens when you're just given a command. You're not expected to understand it. Right, right. like... Uh, it, that works only if the whole thing is already working together. It does not work when you're trying to build it. <laughs> yeah, because nobody knows what they're doing. And nobody knows what they want out of it. Mm-hmm. Just... Um, just off the top of my head early on that one. Cool, cool. 
Yep, so we want to be able to more uh, um, have available to our culture the ability to formalize interactions within a domain and within any domain. And, and then being able to bridge those domains. Yeah. Because uh, you don't want one problem solved to become another problem to solve for something else. Mm -hmm. Which is essentially the current state of affairs. Um, you solve one problem, but it's just an output of... Is that dust man? <laughs> nice. Our regular guest. The dust man. How's it going? Yeah, um... Why isn't my YouTube working? I didn't see the vehicle there, I just saw the lights on. Yeah, oh, the vehicle. The, the, true. We, we, we got driven. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the live stream. Oh, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Good to be on. There, our people know you. They know you. Oh, okay. You were already introduced. Right on, right on. <laughs> good? Good, good. Hey, I got a question for you. Uh, I have a feeling I know. He, you smells, know me too he well. smells like it. You know me just <laughs> to smell the desperation. <laughs> oh, yes, desperation. This is it. I'm not sure if I had one bef uh, be between the last time we saw each other or not. <laughs> that's, that's the funny part to me. It's all good. Holy shit. Got almost a proper mic stand set up. Uh, kind of, oh, yeah. Dude, we're, like on, we're on video 7 here. Slightly upgraded. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's at least like 15 hours now recorded. See? <laughs> yep. Keep rolling along. We're just talking about society and organizational structures and... Yeah, and how we're trying to bridge the previous conversation into the current conversation and all that stuff. Very nice. We even brought uh, details from the first conversation into yes. this. Nice, nice. Always looping back. Mm -hmm. Can I offer you a beverage? No, I mean, getting to work, so. It's light. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a light beverage. Since <laughs> <laughs> when? Oh, we tread lightly. That's yeah. Yep. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice it, but it's a shoe print. It's more uh, for hydration yeah. purposes. Oh, okay. It hardly does anything. You gotta well, stay hydrated. It's breakfast first. That, well, it's not a very good breakfast. Yeah, it's not very filling. No. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Where were we? Continue, proceed. Oh, no, no. Cool, cool. All right. Um, if you do do the music part, uh, just keep in mind that you are uh, uh, um, um, killing our copyright abilities. Sometimes to, to sell the videos. I don't know if we picked it up last time. Uh, we had some. So, uh, so, we, so we can't sell them if you do that. Yeah, right. We can't make any money off it. So, you're so just oh, to, no. just be aware of how you're affecting our ability <laughs> as capitalists. Yeah. All right. So just like underground rap them. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think you need to keep, keep carrying it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I also need an Astro. Oh, yeah. I'll grab you one of them. Very satisfying. Satisfying. Good. Having a bit of cancer sticks. <laughs> Just a bit of cancer. Yeah, so we may want to bring up the... We may want to bring up the uh, that matrix diagram yeah. and tie that into this new thoughts about domain, about having a problem domain. Yeah, um, because the problem domain is being solved within that matrix. Yeah. So, so what that means is that the um, uh, the framework for the domain needs to be brought into that matrix. But the funny thing is, is that the matrix is built yeah. out from that domain. So it's a kind of a loop. As we would expect. This is the strange loop of the uh, cognitive sphere. If you Par will. for the course. Yeah. 
All right, so if we go back to do 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 do, which one was? Oh no, it's not one of these. It's one of it's one of these. Yep. Now. Yeah, it is. It's that one. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Let's save. Just um, I don't have a really good way of viewing these except to throw them because I don't want to I want the chat still to be yeah in the bottom left there you know well we can we, we, we can hide it for like temporarily for a diagram and then go back to it afterwards we don't have do, to be perfect do, 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 do. we don't have the screen in real estate it's all good to be perfect do, 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 disc when you have 15 monitors we can talk. Cool. All right, there we go. So, and then, see, it's kind of a little bit tricky, so I gotta go now. Our chat is okay. Bring that. Le image. Do 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 do. So we don't have any kind of a chart yet for uh, for like a a domain, a problem domain. No, no. Nothing. So so this would actually stay, um, run its course through here. Um, in the matrix, a problem will show up, right? In the ontological matrix, as we now call it, uh, you will have a problem showing up. Mm -hmm. That problem will be faced by the agents in that matrix which will be tasked with resolution right um, and so that uh, that relationship will shape some sort of artifact um, and that artifact will be then reconstituted into said matrix and it will continue to affect it and so what we're really trying to get a handle of is uh, what is it specifically that we're inserting into this matrix and whether that is something that should be inserted, something that uh, causes it to uh, harmonize with itself, something that causes it to fly right. into a chaotic mess. Yeah, so you have to have feedback on any, any new agency within that domain I guess right and any new artifact is 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 is, is contributing further and further and further activity into it um, potentially making it more obscure or not you, you kind of get these uh, kind of get a gradient there uh, it's not any one particular thing yeah um, and it's not good, evil, or any of those kinds of things. It's just simply uh, whether it's the system is self-coherent in the sense that the lower layers are cared for in a sense that they maintain. Yeah, well, somebody's going to have the, an affect response to It's basically everything. like if you feed yourself, are you, you're going to live better than if you don't feed yourself, right? right. There's a basic... Yeah. underlying mechanisms that you got to take care of mm -hmm. and it's all about that if it takes care of them the whole thing works if it doesn't it breaks down yep that's the conversation we're in really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just checking the monitor oh yeah yeah looks good for example nice adjustment for example smoking is probably not the um kind of activity that should be injected into the matrix. Right. So but even though it feels good, that doesn't mean it that yeah. that at lower layers it's still it's healthy or anything like that. Yeah. And this is more of a comment of uh, where I'm at <laughs> compared to where I should be at. But whatever. As long as we understand what the point is. It is an example. So all all of these uh, agents in and would we say there's a singular matrix or are there multiple matrices um, hey, there's for each never domain? a single there's never a singular anything yeah for well, that's yeah there is a matrix uh, there's as many matrix C's if you will as there are agents 
but at the same time, there is a kind of a, a mesh matrix uh, that comprises the whole, uh, right. in which everybody interacts with everybody. The thing is, is about the multiplicity of the matrix is that it's just a variation of the same theme just juxtapo just uh, juxtaposed upon each other in a different way and so this creates a very obscure um, interface into it uh, in which uh, interfacing with it is really becomes a, more of a, a game of lottery than than uh, one of merit despite the fact that uh, the only thing mm -hmm. that the matrix is recognizing is a kind of an account um, an account of merit the problem is is that it's assigned to agencies that don't necessarily reflect anything in the real world or anyone in the real world and when they don't reflect anyone they don't really behave uh, for the benefit of anyone cool I'm just checking our stream I can see the videos chopping up a bit but uh, audio seems okay. Which awesome. Is the important part. Alright. Speaking of audio, we're back. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Get ready for it. Dustin, bring in the noise. It's a good thing we have a directional microphone. Should help out a little bit. So this is a this is a machine basically. Uh, the way that people act, in, interact in a structured way uh, to get things done within a particular problem domain, and the way we would describe the way we would describe those um, the particular interactions between the agents is through sound bites, which we could say, okay, whenever this happens, then this guy is going to do that. Or this, when somebody pays for money, then they get their cheeseburger. They're like little... So, um, sound bite, in this case, uh, uh, I would define them as a, as a self-contained mimetic algorithm. What, that, what I mean by that is, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a phrase that plugs into your current understanding of something and therefore already has a meaning as soon as it is said and because of that you're not really questioning what's being said because you're already moving uh, uh, in terms of a narrative that you already recognize and so a sound bite uh, is, a, is, is a very a very small self-contained um, narrative that really relies on existing uh, meanings to exist uh, to plug into so that it makes sense so like when you say uh, a, a great example of this I would say would be like the expression apples and pears uh, in co colloquial uh, English uh, forget I uh, forget the the, um, the locality of this but the actual meaning of the phrase is up the stairs so you need to know that apple and pears and first of all it's, a, it, it's based on the rhyme right um, it, it, the actual expression so apple and pears up the stairs as a, as a meaningful statement uh, only works uh, if you know that it's supposed to mean that if, you don't, if you're not from that area you, you will you'd be confused especially if you don't speak the language hmm. weird Right, so there's like a weird uh, no, hold on, metaphorical aspects to this. A sound bite, 
although that's probably the typical uh, presentation is in that, that very fluidic type of communication it can also be um, sound bites for a domain that you've never encountered right and through encountering those sound bites you become more familiar with the operation of that domain right? you don't, right. it doesn't have to slot in perfect Right, right. The um, idea is that it, as as much as possible, it should. So, so there's a heuristic behind every soundbite, of course. Uh, and uh, the more soundbites you get, <clears throat> the more you can uh, actually con contain them together, and you get a, a domain basically out of that. Mm -hmm. right. But here is the problem: um, these soundbites will become bound to those domains. They don't necessarily represent anything outside of it. And uh, as soon as you lose that context those sound bites don't actually have a meaning and the problem that we are encountering is that contexts are not uh, contexts are not static things can context switch um, uh, context switch on, a, on, a, on another layer on, on yet another layered system part part of which is actually controlled via these sound bites. So a sound bite can actually change the context of the next sound bite and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And so no sound bite has any concrete meaning in any given uh, in, in, in any universal sense. But because you don't get anything but sound bites in terms of inter in terms of um, interaction with this whole system, it becomes very, very um, uh, difficult to to see the, so those sound bites in the system that they're in versus the system that they describe, and those two don't work together. Um, don't, don't those two don't necessarily um, describe the same things mm. or model the same things, and so your sound bites can get away from you in a way that has nothing to do with right. the entire mechanism that's behind like a kind of a, sh a shift forming it. a shift of the terrain from underneath the sound bite where it can happen and the reason that this would happen has to do with entropy in that a there's more ways to put together sound bites than there are uh, ways yep. to put together put them together into the model um, and because this is an entire what we would now call a carrier on its own you are liable to have noise essentially is what this means right if you have a noise um, that means entropy is very much at play in the sense that you can get m far more uh, disorganized combinations out of this carrier than ordinary ones and so it becomes a constraint to uh, to how to utilize this carrier properly and if it's not, it's just going to go haywire, and mm -hmm. like 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 anything else. Without with with neglect, it just doesn't continue, and it, it just breaks down eventually. That's right. that's the that's this that's the trajectory we're looking at in terms of uh, the system. So you just mentioned a kind of new term, carrier. This is this is related to to this chart in that um, you're having a bunch of agents interacting in a certain way right. and that upon a medium and that's what makes it a carrier yeah yeah so so agent to agent communication happens through a carrier mm -hmm. that's that's the and that is that is what the matrix in this diagram is actually representing. These this uh, combination of carriers uh, right. that agents uh, communicate. Through. So we're we're looking at it at any particular domain. We're looking at it as a as a a domain of things that can be manipulated in certain ways to produce different signals, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whether the signal be a fruit on a tree, that's a good signal that you want. So on a farm, as a, as a carrier. You're going to have workers doing different things to optimize that fruit production signal, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas noise would be the weeds, the weather, the, yeah. all of the different things that you have to take care of uh, to ensure that the signal clarity is uh, is, is maximized. Mm -hmm. um, 
and this 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 uh, modeling works for a lot of the processes that we're engaged in already. <laughs> right, and and also there's carriers within carriers within carriers. Like the tree has fruit, and the tree is sitting in dirt. So you've got you've got land, you've got a tree, and you've got a fruit. And mm -hmm. each of these are interacting with each other in different ways. Yeah. And we're having, over those, uh, the membrane between each of them, you're having agents which can communicate the chemical codes between them to translate nutrients up into the fruit kind of stuff. Right. So to, to make, make it more uh, realistic and back to life kind of a thing, there's things you do with with the soil in terms of making sure that pH levels are correct. There are things that you do with sunlight uh, to make sure that uh, you know uh, the uh, environment is correct on the outside. Mm -hmm. There are things that you do with pruning. There are things that you do with weeding. There are things that you do with watering. Um, you, you, you're changing all of these different aspects of. Uh, Of the thing that contains your your object of interest, so that the patterns of the thing that contains it are are uh, beneficial to that object of interest, right? Mm -hmm. you're, 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 so so this this causes a whole bunch of constraints to have to have to be exercised to make it to happen, mm -hmm. and so uh, the interaction between the agents has to be isomorphic with those constraints. Right. Otherwise, that doesn't happen. And in, in any domain, you're going to find that there are certain objects which are required to satisfy particular needs. Right. So you're having inputs within the economic system, and then you're having outputs. Those outputs are, are, are also um, satisfying a whole bunch of constraints. And that's, that's what makes it a commodity. Um, is that it, it's shaped properly, um, that somebody would want to buy it or whatever, that you would want that, that okay. product. Right? This is part of any problem domain, is that you're, you, you, have, you want an objective. Not a commodity. It's a part of what you want that object. A commodity represents a set of objects that could potentially fulfill that. So there's a difference between the category of the object and the object itself. Um, this system actually is honing in on the object rather than the commodity because sometimes because this object is not necessarily that object. So what's the difference? So isn't isn't a commodity basically any anything um, that's that's desired? The big the bi the basic difference between a commodity and something uh, that is potentially the product of this is that a commodity and gives you a category of objects. So you're not literally looking for a particular solution, but you're looking for okay, uh, so an abstraction that can yeah. fulfill that solution. So your point of contention then, is basically top down or or bottom up. My point of contention is is that this ignores uh, a, a, a particular aspect of what happens when you commodify something. Uh, when you when you create a commodity to solve your problem, you're saying that you can have this object or that object or this third object fulfilling the role of the, the, um, the, the solution. Right, right, but doesn't every system basically do that? Not necessarily. Sometimes it's just a category of one. Right? You, can, you, can't, you, you can't solve the problem of okay. having, a, having a genia here um. without having a genia here. Right, like you can't do that. So, so you're you're talking about, or a brine um, here, and having a brine. Just within maybe the inner workings of any particular corporation to get something done. They have an objective. You yeah. don't you don't keep doing that objective over and over again. They just want the thing. Yeah. So it's so not necessarily a commodity. At it's that. not necessarily a commodity. However, it can be if uh, the, the the process that has has to be repeated over and over again uh, for right. the benefit of multiple agents sat being satisfied by this. So, I com see. commodity is really an abstract object. And the problem with that, with uh, using commodity as a concrete object, is that you forget that there are actual concrete objects, and you treat them as the abstraction. So, if I were to treat you not as Brian, but as, say, uh, white male, you're automatically losing everything 
nothing to do with you as a person. You're, you're, be, you're becoming this cog in a different system that has nothing to do with you as, a, um, mm -hmm. as an actual person living a life. Right. But rather, uh, everything about you is now becomes in terms of that system. And within any kind of like dynamic organization system, we're often more concerned with the vast interconnectivities of this particular object that we want. Yeah. We we're not we don't want to just cut cookies, but we want we want it to be a this part, a part of the living a part of the living organi organism. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. So, so okay. every cookie is its own living thing too. Point taken. So probably. So, so commodity commodity is an aspect to this, but a commodity is uh, should definitely not be um, the the end of it. Um, and that's that's actually the discrepancy between our um, market machine uh, and the model machine, if you will. Uh, in, in that the market machine is an incapable of seeing anything in terms of itself. It can only see the categories. Yeah. It has no concept of uh, how to treat an individual thing outside of a categorization. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is the basic problem that... Um, that that uh, in where um, dysmorphism can just like blow yeah. up so into it, unrecognizable forms. It's only ever the output or the the end result of the whole process that that gives an image, and that image is what's held what's held onto, mm -hmm. as if it is the substance itself. And this goes back to into the fact that any concrete image is only ever fabricated through abstraction. But when you categorize the concrete image. You are making it abstract to begin with, and so you are only dealing with abstraction and never the concrete. And uh, yeah, you basically end up neglecting an entire layer of um, existence. Mm -hmm. Typical. <laughs> Just checking if we're in my video paused here. Why is not my monitor working? I assume we're still we're still good. Let's check YouTube. Live. No, what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're 50 minutes in. Do 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 do. <laughs> Is that what Cohen said? No. <laughs> So we're still, still good. Okay. So my monitor froze, so <clears throat> whenever that happens, I have to wonder, are we still even talking to anyone but ourselves? All right, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we've got potentially a, any number of domains of behavior within society where certain objectives are trying to be met, and you've got all this, so, and, and that is, the same as basically a carrier so you're having this environment where, where things can be manipulated and you've got rules for how to manipulate them and those rule executors are called agents so agents are operating on a carrier in ways that cause interactions to happen for so, problems to be solved yeah so, so one other way to look at it an agent what happens is, is that an agent can create a boundary between carriers between communication carriers, and uh, right. the, the what happens is, is that when the signals arrive at those carriers, the agent has the cap capacity for, for, for it to cause different signals to occur on other carriers right. that it's that it's that it's interacting that it's sort of standing in between. Yeah. So the classic example would be like you go into a restaurant and you make an order. And very importantly, you pay money for that order. Transaction has been completed. The signal goes to the restaurant, the, the operators within, the agents within the restaurant to create, to serve that order to you. Yeah, immediately they start responding and, the, yeah. and then they start to do their own signaling. Right. So um, on, on, one, on the front end, you've interacted potentially with the whole banking system yeah. and you've, your account and, and you've, all this. And you've sent a signal to them to pay for your order, right. to, to, so to you order no your order. you no longer have that money mm -hmm. and something now happens in and the now, And now this whole agency is now responding with interactions and whatnot and sending signals out back to you. Mm-hmm. 
So that, that's the idea behind uh, an agent sitting between carriers. Uh, the carriers can be the restaurants, the restaurants system. The carrier can be the monetary system. The carrier can be the verbal system. The carrier, like all of these different carriers, you say you you send something over one, you get something back from other ones um, as a response. Mm -hmm. And the reason that happens is because there's an agent sitting between them, between you, between these carry different carriers that we're talking right. about. Mm -hmm to sort of see uh, signals on one carrier and then apply signals on another carrier? So right away we see um, uh, an interesting phenomenon in which we should we um, have a, a need to model the problem domains and immediately we are seeing a domain which we need to model. So this carrier domain... Wait, say that again. So before then, we were talking about modeling domains, modeling domains, and where it happens within within the context of the matrix that happens in there. That that's mm -hmm. where the modeling happens, right? But one of the domains that needs to be modeled is this carrier agent uh, communication domain itself that does the modeling. Right. So the domain that's that, a problem domain in itself. Yeah. So the domain that does the modeling is one of the problem is, is the fundamental problem domain to model to begin with. <clears throat> right. Before you can even really properly model the rest. Right. Mm -hmm. And the modeling of that is actually what we uh, um, have uh, determined to be the responsibility of the uh, s uh, synthetic neural network. So that's, right. that's the guild mm -hmm. that's responsible for this model. It's responsible for modeling the domain that's responsible for, for modeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. And would you say that's wrapped up into these the other carriers and domains, or that's a so thing in itself, so, so, basically? So, so we have a domain of carriers and agents and whatnot that is modeled, right? Yeah. And now this domain that's being modeled, what it needs to model is modeling things to begin with. But doesn't it have to do that before it can even really model itself? Yes. Not that, that, that's, that, that's, that's the step to, that's the step to begin with. You have to right. have mechanisms to model in order to model itself. Mm -hmm. So the generic mechanisms that model it okay. Okay, need to yeah, be embedded yeah, yeah. into it to be able to generically model I see model what you're things. saying. Um, this is a whole other problem domain, you could say, which is simply modeling itself. Yes. Which so, is aside from anything. So now, so, so, so we have a modeling domain. This domain is modeling the agents that do modeling. And so because of that, we need to insert the modeling domain into the agents that do model. So we, we, we take the, its lower layer and plunk yep. it into the upper layer. And then on top of that, we need to have a, a basic uh, um, bootstrap, right? A bootstrap to give it context. And that context is what becomes the mimetic model. And so on top of modeling something, it needs to model the mimetic model through which it can build other domains using the domain modeling system that it has embedded in the outer layer. Hmm. So it will uh, embed its lower layer inside of itself, inside of the lower layer, inside of the embedded lower layer, another lower layer is embedded, and this lower layer that's embedded is using the modeling layer to express all other models and so this is the artificial injection if you will of uh, the model into the system in order for it to be able to be coherent with itself um, as it were now why is there I'm still trying to wrap my head around this like why is there two why is there two jumps being described like I understand you have a domain which you want to model so you 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 apply the problem of modeling to that Okay, I now I know how to model, and I model right, the domain. Cause, cause that Where is the third one? Because at that phase, it's just it's just an ability to write algorithms. Those algorithms are not constrained by anything whatsoever. So, 
We need to bring the next constraint in. Uh, the next constraint is, is okay. what is it that we're going to model? Well, we're going to model agents that communicate with each other. And this is why you mentioned other. other domains. Yeah. So, 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 so we're modeling the agents that communicate with each other and all of that jazz, right? But now those agents are completely ignorant of how to model anything. So we need to bring back the model that modeled them into their capacity to communicate. Right. So what they're communicating now is the same modeling language that created them. But again, you're stuck with the, another problem. Mm -hmm. It can go haywire because yeah. there's no constraint. So what's that constraint? Oh, well, that comes from below that. That comes from the rest of the model, the rest of the DNA core that we have, the guild, uh, the guild dynamics that are, we've been building yeah. so far, so which is the mimetic model. You need to inject the whole... So you're injecting that um, into the agent's ability to model stuff that as an another overlay of how it will do the modeling to begin with right like and you need doing to that, you it'll... need to put the agent in touch with like the archetype stack and all that exactly exactly you put you you bring it right back down to all of the layers mm -hmm. and that that's what allows the the agent instead of just being able to do modeling itself which is great you do modeling in the context of of the tree of life or however you would want to say it. like the whole all of everything and you're able to um, to get a bigger picture of what's going on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the funny thing is is that these models that I'm saying are part of the mimetic model which is what you're embedding right into it so this entire explanation is essentially what's being embedded into the agents ability to model things in the first place and basically the entire mm -hmm. thing is now modeling itself and as it's modeling itself, it's communicating with itself. And what do we know of people is that they basically are communicating with themselves. And mm. the rest is just a resonation outwards. And it gets feedback. But the conversation is really between you and yourself all the time. And this is the same scenario, except it's uh, described as... Uh, described not as a bounded to the human body, if you will but it can now flow into mm -hmm. a computational architecture. You can take a computer right. and have it model these Which things. Which happens when and if like it, it models, mm -hmm. And if it models uh, the entire stack back in, in all of these uh, internal layers, it's basically um, in the same uh, sort of uh, membership phase as a human. And there's now no difference between human and machine. The entire environment becomes an environment again. And we are uh, mm -hmm. back to the natural concerns in scenario where this is where it's always been the point of this conversation. Back to, to begin the with. garden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, heaven on earth, if you will. Whatever metaphor you will, you, you like. Um, Mm -hmm. This is where we stop taking care of a machine that's all sitting on top of us and demands things from mm -hmm. us. Which is very which annoying. Which is not only annoying, it's crushing us. It's, yeah. it's destroying... It's terminal. It, this is the uh, breakaway it's civilization. It's destroying our humanity. It makes us inhuman to other people. It makes us incapable mm -hmm. of helping each other. This is taking that and reversing the uh, relationship such that we are in one environment dealing with life as life. Ideal. Mm -hmm. And goal. That's the ideal. Um, yeah. So, the freedom is not in the freedom from uh, work. It's more of a freedom from artificial scheduled work that has nothing to do with mm -hmm. living. The, which is unbounded to life itself and the stack, the archetype stack and all that. Uh, basically a, a runaway um, cancerous type of doomsday civilization. Alright, so... Still getting those uh, video yeah, chops no. there, that's okay though. So yeah, we've, we've so essentially said that any domain, so any domain that you want to model um, we're saying, okay, here's how to model it. So we're kind of injecting that model into that, that ability. And on top of that, we're saying, here's how to model it in a way... Uh, here's a, here's a domain connects. to model. 
he, which connects with every other potential domain. Yeah. So 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 that that comes across as a domain to model. When you model this domain, you're basically saying, okay, this is ac- this is how other domains will be modeled, right? So that gives you that interface to mm-hmm. that, and then you make use of that interface to uh, to say, okay, like let, let's uh, c- let's take those uh, right. let's take this domain and and have it utilize the uh, mapping of other domains, and then. To, to, to really 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 close off the loop you got to constrain it um, to a f- uh, what, what, what I would call a fundamental model that uh, built it up to begin with when it's constrained to that um, it will simply mm-hmm. self self care right like as, as a perpetual uh, goal setting <clears throat> mechanism and this is getting into the idea of um, the holonic uh, what you would call it, emergence of layers of complexity which form life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go molecules, cells, yeah. uh, tissues, organs, all that. And it and goes so up, and each layer up has to take care of the ones below it. If it doesn't, it's it's cut off from the tree of life, as they would say. And so to, to, to bring it a little bit more home, a lot of this sounds like it's something that is meant for computers and whatnot, but really this is uh, just a fundamental uh, structure of systems social interaction um, we're, we're talking about like mm-hmm. modeling ourselves within our social interaction and then w- using the, 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 the self model as a mechanism to create other models which model themselves and by having this mental framework in mind you're constrained to modeling things in a way that fits with what is mm-hmm. rather than any ideal um, and if it fits with what yep. it is it works with it and if it fits with what only is ideal it just may crush what is mm-hmm. it, there is no telling what the relationship is because it's not identifying what it's built on mm-hmm. yep let's take a short to be right back break
Tis fine, tis fine. Uh, welcome back. Here we We're go. We're back. Guess who's back? Back again. All right. Accents back. Tell some men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a really interesting discussion of how to keep things on the rails, so to speak, as far as yeah. a just and civilized society. Well, not just a uh, civilized how society. How do you, what would you say? This What's is, your big words? This is the constraint that uh, the entire um, guild institution slash corporate network infrastructure that uh, is taking care of. It has to follow. Right, it keeps things coherent, and that's yeah. the, that's the the, de so, the deal is so, that it doesn't just spin off into chaos so entropy. Yeah, so the domain identification and all that com computation um, aspect of identifying a domain to begin with, it, as, leaving aside the 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 mm -hmm. constituents of who are uh, are doing this domain decision, right, making stuff. That part, the computational part, of the domain describe, description to begin with is part of the agile economy. Right. And so we so, wanted to get into how to describe a domain, how to break it down into pieces, yeah. the processes that happen within a domain. Right, right. So um, this this is actually the purpose of the, uh, the whole meta product stack that we introduced is to be able to... Um, is, is sort of like to guide what domains are, what they pertain to, how do they satisfy uh, demand and supply. Uh, the, the, so these are the, the uh, so, so domain uh, computation rather is going to be uh, taken care of um, <coughs> is taken care of uh, the initiatives behind those products and the fulfillment of them of their creation uh to to uh right to, so to we're we're mapping out the demand and supply of a domain uh, the domain being the model in this case uh, the model being uh, the guild um the guild institute okay in no. this in this case right but it's generic too generic to problem solving in the first place but mm -hmm. that that's the that's the constituent of being in the guild institute is to do that so it's one and right. the same, really. It's not just cool. another yeah. distinction. So what do we need to know about about how that part comes together? How to model that uh, um, computation? How to structure it? Um, this ties back into having um, having an initiative brought up by members, or rather, um, members are uh, members are like the as an analogy, members are like are like software users and of course this is a lot a lot to do with uh, perceptual perception and everything like that so a lot of it is kind of a, a, a scenario of programming that perception and running ideas and all of that jazz so this is why the angle is the way it is um, we're uh, we're we're trying to run essentially a, a kind of a Developing up a program to to, to, to resolve a particular uh, uh, situation that happens throughout uh, living conditions, right? Um, mm -hmm. What was one, that? One moment, please. Who did that? Hello. Here we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. 
So where were we? Uh, yeah, I, f <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Uh, <coughs> demand and supply, where we're comp modeling the computation within a domain. Right. Uh, so computation comes into play as to how to uh, fulfill demand. A demand comes up from a, the existence of, a, of an individual, right? Uh, just being there. Um, and on top of that, uh, what they express. Um, so, when these things are expressed uh, and are there, you get a list of what needs to happen. Right. Um, and the list of what needs to happen needs to be compared to uh, any other list of what needs to happen. So, and the way that you, the way that you come about this this list is, or one way I guess can be simply observing all the stories that happen within a particular domain. Like the the library was an example, right? Like yeah. A customer wants to put a book on hold. Uh, uh, you know, a customer wanted to put a book on hold, but they're already past their limit of holds, right? What do you do then? You know, a customer picked up their hold, a customer canceled their hold. All these stories of what happens within the domain need to be modeled so that you can supply what's being demanded. Yeah. Um, so, the, so, so this is uh, what a breaking up of the domain is, is, is to basically figure out uh, a, 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 a language that describes uh, all the different interactions within a space. Mm -hmm. Once you have that captured, you can assert, well, if I have this, um, I can do that. If I have that, I can do this, right? You can start to see how to connect different aspects of it in a shorter way, um, in a more efficient way, and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, did we get a um, YouTube comment? Sorry. Keep Go on. <laughs> hey, hey, each person is a matrix. Yep. Thank you, Akira. We have we mentioned that, I think. I think you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, each person uh, definitely is uh, their own um, yep. version of a matrix. That is very, uh, very astute, uh, the, very observant of you. <laughs> this is the meta narrative that we're all kind of having our own narratives. Yeah, the, the, the thing to note is that uh, it's. The, there is a commonality in those matrices, um, matrices that is uh, I I that is predictable, um, and uh, it's predictable because it's uh, actually based on a very simplified uh, modeling of the universe, uh, which we ter termed uh, the market machine. Um, in particular, in that everything is a commodity. Um, particular that uh, there is no object that is referred to outside of a category so when you do that again the object loses identity and you're just having these categories um, and so in this way the ma all the different kinds of matrices are trading each other with each other right they're trading what me what means what mm -hmm. and uh, in that way there is one matrix that is completely right. uh, in an idealistic sense. It, it's it's obfuscated in uh, from any one agent's perspective because they are all carrying their own. But all these different tiny um, trading in, uh, interaction points cause it cause them to have a, like a, this universal um, structure that is completely laundered through currency, right? Um, it's laundered in a sense that everything loses meaning and becomes a number. And uh, once it's, well, once that happens, right, the, the, the trading between the different matrices is completely arbitrary. It has no actual cons um, viable room for any kind of constraint because all you, as soon as you put mm. a constraint down, uh, you can just redefine what things are and subvert the constraint, mm -hmm. and so it becomes an absolutely moot exercise, a pointless exercise. Uh, the, the cycles of reform, revolution, and everything always wind up bringing about the exact same problem. And so, mm -hmm. this isn't a uh, true story. Not a viable, not a viable solution to anything. And hence, we mm -hmm. are discussing what we're discussing. Yep. Yeah, surface level 
stuff doesn't really, it, it always ends up going bad. Because a representation can only be valid for so long. Basically, in the context itself, it's, it's okay, but then when that gets replicated out and extended way beyond it, what it, it was ever meant to be. That's, that's actually the uh, whole problem of externalizing a memory in that um, a memory actually only has a meaning in the context in which it was produced. Right. So if yep. you cannot reproduce the context, but only the memory, then you're running the risk of uh, having a sound bite misrepresenting, um, misrepresenting the model, essentially, the, the, from which it came. Mm -hmm. And you can have a soundbite that made sense in that context uh, drive insan insane behaviors in a different context. Yep. The problem of abstraction. Mm -hmm. So, where are we with our... We are uh, just getting into uh, computation. And... Because we want to get into computation cardboard game. Cardboard, card box game, mm -hmm. and that has to do with implanting the agents into the modeling, implanting the modeling right. back into the agents, implanting the memetic system into the modeling that's implanted into the agents, which becomes the basis for the game. Bam! There it is, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> until we get to that point, so we were we we're describing different scenarios of how to how to process a domain for for computation. Basically, the the procedure you would go through of collecting all the stories that happen within a particular domain, um, and sort of abstracting them, abstracting the processes that go on within that domain. And then once we have processes, then we know what the agents are supposed to do on either side of these uh, carriers and membranes, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're supposed to do by protocol. So the agents do a process, the customer does a process, whatever. And the economics of the system function properly. Mm -hmm. So we're modeling something so that it can be regular and, uh, and properly feedback can properly happen too. This is why you need to model those agents in the first place so you can model your model juxtaposed upon those agents to begin with. Like you got to take those mm -hmm. two models together yeah, and because see how they work. Everybody has their own uh, perspective and their own idea of, of how a system is working. Right? So we want to convert to be able to express to to think those through, express them, share them mm -hmm. and then converge that model such that the domain the coherence of the domain increases. And then on top of all of this, we want them to be able to take all of what we just said into consideration because all of that is affecting, the dis because taking this into consideration affects the kind of models you're making to begin with. Because if you're taking it into consideration, you're considering agents, you're considering the fact that they are in the context of the environment and all of that stuff mm -hmm. to begin with, then the restrictions on your model become much more apparent. Um, and the right. domain that you're working with is actually including all of these different other models already, and so you're bootstrapped into not necessarily solving a problem in a vacuum, but uh, solving a problem in that context. Right. And this is the, the greater context of that, the mimetic, the model, bringing in the archetypes that we, that we each... Um, Actually, we could we could pull it up. I don't know if it, it might help, but just as a illustration. This is actually more of a discussion about the guilds than the archetypes. I suppose, but this is what it makes me think of that all of this has to be. Or are we even on? Yeah. So all of this has to be taken into consideration. This is like kind of a whole of of things that need to happen for life to exist from bottom to top. It's a model of of, of that anyway. So these are the kind of things that have to come in. Mm -hmm. into consideration on top right. of modeling this little domain that you're yeah, so concerned with. So you got to keep that model in mind as well. So neglect, don't neglect this. Don't neglect that. Don't neglect the following thing. Right. So that, that gives you kind for. of hooks into the greater world of life 
from any particular domain that you're trying to uh, uh, deal with. It, it makes it makes all domains in um, inter inter uh, networked. They're uh, they're mm -hmm. not. There's no one single domain. It's a fractal. Uh, right. of, of things that are in, interconnected and while there's a boundary around the whole trying to find a boundary around any part of it is going to be um, contextual only right? right like it'll make sense in one instance but not in the next instance and so um, mm -hmm. if you don't do not account for that in your modeling you, you, you're uh, going to uh, bulldoze over instances where the context is different uh, you're just gonna steamroll right through it, right? Um, crush any 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 variance, and, and it will be absolutely unnecessary, simply because um, a, 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 an ideological model didn't match in mm -hmm. that instance. Yeah. Despite the fact that it might not have anything to do with it. And even so. everybody has their own individual context. And when we when we take a look at the life in a greater as a whole sort of thing. Um, even just by looking at our own stack of what we need to, to exist and survive and all this, it kind of forces you to reflect on, okay, others also have this stack that they need to, in order to keep surviving and all that. So it kind of pulls in everything. It, it, it bridges the communication protocol. Uh, it bridges the fact that we are in the same boat, so to speak. Uh, right. Which, which, which removes a lot of the barriers mm -hmm. um, for... Uh, what roles should be adopted because uh, if, if we put the whole question of ego aside the roles that should be adopted are the ones that are going to do something about the situation not right. the ones that you know um, uh, you necessarily want and mm -hmm. yeah this isn't about like being like easy on yourself and, and, and like freeing yourself from responsibility um, in fact kind it's of far from it yeah uh, and it, it, it does place the question of responsibility squarely onto the shoulders of every individual. The other issue to that, though, is uh, the ability to actually respond, which is which is fundamentally uh, unavailable in, in, in the current context, in the current uh, plateau. Yeah. And so this discussion is also a way to uh, address that circumstance and to uh, contextualize what responsibility could actually mean mm -hmm. uh, yep. in, in this framework. And why is that necessary? Be um, we, we, look, we look towards all the different places within the economy where we could be interacting in a much more harmonious or better ways with people, and yet this model doesn't exist. It's hard, scarcely to be found anywhere. So you are basically, you have money, okay, you have product. I'll give you product if you give me money, and that's like that's how complex it gets, right? It's not. Yeah. There's nothing. This this complex web of, of like super intelligence it doesn't. It only exists where we create it through education, right? And it effort. Yeah, and it, effort. It, it, it has to be. A, it has to be a self-realized effort. Yeah. Um, and just looking at the progression <clears throat> of the plateaus of commodification, it's as I was saying on chat earlier. It's a, it's a, it may look like the myth of progress that we think it's progress that things are getting better and all that, but, but really also they're also drifting been, farther away. Like it has decay. a decay. It, it it actually has a very um, implicit, but far more pr uh, strong sense of decay uh, of something. Uh, so. On the progression side, you get this one layer that is simply uh, expon growing exponentially. But on the other side, the layer below it, the layer that makes it work to begin with, is actually getting more and more vacant of everything that made it capable of creating the upper layer in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, the breakaway civilization, basically. So uh, an analogy for this would be in the way that um, our ability to make decisions for ourselves are more and more uh, delegated to some kind of authority. Uh, for instance, conflict resolution, big one. Uh, 
there's specific laws in place that state, for instance, in, in, in almost every single civilized society we can think of, that you are not responsible for resolving an actual conflict. You must call a third party to mediate, right? And only by the, the um, certification of this third party that we can call a conflict resolved, right? This, this situation, while makes sense on the face of it in terms of a society you, you don't trust, but that's the, that's the key here. Mm -hmm. um, why do we, we have a society we do not trust because it relies on everything being mediated yeah. for it. And this is the kind of society right. that is essentially... Um, Try and trust people for it. They the, can't do the, anything. The, 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 this is the kind of a, of a group, of a demographic that you get with children. Um, children have no capacity for self-conflict resolution. They don't have the tools yet in their mindsets to, to, to understand the kind of problems they're facing. But we've, what we've done is we've taken that concept and we've extended it to a point where adults, self-sufficient, supposedly, adults who are supposed to provide for themselves in our individualistic society are bereft of their capacity to make these kinds of decisions entirely to the point that if they do make those decisions, they are actually seen as criminals in the eyes of the law. Mm -hmm. So this is... Uh, effectively forced childhood um, we are ref we are effectively forced to behave in a way that we would behave in a context of a parent admonishing us and this is the whole of adult society being treated this mm -hmm. way and so we have effectively children in adult bodies relying on a parent Right, like the the idea the, the the counterpart to all of this is that the the, the the quote unquote parent to whom this is supposed to be relegated to isn't actually there. There's no um, the, right. the, the systemic the systemic aspect of it doesn't go that far. It just goes as far as to yeah. uh, uh, make that in, make that relationship between it and itself. But the relationship isn't reflected in that, and so, it, it, if we were to take that analogy further, what you get is a, a, a not only is it, if you get a parent-child relationship, you get a neglectful parent, and a fend-for-yourself mm -hmm. child, which we see reflected in actual um, situations where normal, for lack of a better uh, um, reference point, uh, the 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 the. the average situation is normally not that great what you get is um, what we call a delinquent or whatnot a uh, rebel um, in the circumstance all kinds of yeah like different there, there, patterns there is no there is no there's no union between the two aspects of this mm -hmm. um, it's about it's, it's always a, a relationship of butting heads uh, of, of uh, never understanding one another Mm -hmm. always being past each other and literally never taking care of either one's interest and this the and state as, a, as an adult shows up in an emergency basically if, if somebody's killing someone else like that's but that's only when but only that's to when the spank the child up. but only to like spank the child yelling's only no explanation yell at the child <laughs> Uh, you know, like it's 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 all of those things. It's without any kind of uh, previous sort of uh, idea, uh, mm -hmm. intervention. So kind of. this is all kind of getting into that like analogy of. Uh, this is a great, just a big of, analogy. Uh, yes. Yeah, of um, of of growing up, the stages of growing up. Like even you could say, in like a spiritual sense, like you've got childhood, you've got spiritual adolescence, you've got spiritual adulthood, you've got spiritual whatever maybe there's another one these kind of ideas have been um, around for a long time and probably um, or definitely more prevalent in in like 
more ancient cultures like tribal and stuff like that where you have the rites of passage into adulthood and it's like where you're thrown out into the woods with a knife and to survive and it's like because that you're on your own actually you need you need to realize that society isn't just going to protect you you have to develop that inner feedback loop to 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 sense what's real and what's not because society for you has just become completely unreal because where is it you're in a forest with a knife right like that kind of thing like these the rites of passage it doesn't mean that you've yeah necessarily so, so all of grown that, from it but hopefully so it's a of, symbolic type of idea mm-hmm. that all doesn't of, exist here it's all it's all childhood basically that's the that's a mythology yeah um so all of that is basically based uh has been hijacked into another narrative that says oh yes you're still going through your rites of passage you're passing school you're passing uh, your career right. you're, you're getting your certifications and all of that however if you notice that in this schema you're actually robbed of your ability to do anything of your own you're only ever are uh enabled to do things that have been pre-approved by a different process than anything to do with yourself like somehow it's right. been given to you rather than you are ever yes it's always externalized always mediated and, and this is what we're saying in terms of the parenthood and the childhood relationship is like your rites of passage uh as it were uh are co-opted uh into another system that tells you you've gone through a rite of passage but really You've been just doing more of the same thing of co- of conformance to a not, to to the parent entity, um, um, being checked on how well you obey those rules, being checked on how well you adhere to that extra externalized system rather than having anything to do with yourself. So this really points to something that that's kind of critical for our work, and it's that what we're pointing to is that there's not really a true adulthood that's being fostered or educated um, and that that adulthood so to speak is something that's required for this type this level of organization with others the ability to deal with anything that comes up conflict and all this kind of stuff in a, a centered a well-centered uh, perspective right mm-hmm. we need um, spiritual adults if you want to say whatever that we would call a member um, or even a master if you want to call adolescence the mm, master is more like an elder right okay an elder Sorry. Right. nature yep. nature is a bitch mm-hmm. That ability to discern things beyond the surface level spectacle, to be able to dive into any kind of um, situation and to, to understand that the surface level uh, of what you, what you see is not necessarily the reality and that everything is kind of malleable. This is the kind of responsibility that's required to, um, to navigate uh, this, these types of uh, systems that we're laying out, ultimately. Um, you can have participation Um, you can lay these systems out for others to follow but when things go wrong as they always do or when the the terrain drifts from out from under your model and your model becomes outdated um, this is this raises the situation where it's it's required to have that um, that uh, centered um, self-referential approach which can take the situation up to its full capacity of, of, uh, of harmonization mm-hmm. quite quite a thing it is what is just there's this uh, special ability to see beyond the spectacle to 
reconfigure any any type of situation you're in or you know a participant can be given a, a protocols to become an agent within a carrier or a, 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 a across carriers <laughs> yeah but it when things go wrong and they will go wrong one needs that self-referential that centered self-reference where you just kind of look at the situation not not just by rule bound uh stepping spectacle out, yeah, stepping outside but you step it. outside and do the meta and this is the spiritual adulthood which is not capable by the participants essentially the the type of people who our society raises uh, uh, to follow prefers, orders, follow yeah. instructions. Listen to George Carlin. This is what you are raised to do: is follow orders, follow instructions. Don't question anything. <clears throat> As a society, that's a dead end. This is a decayed state of society. It's actually touted as the the, the fundamental uh, a pinnacle of uh, discipline and all right, that discipline. stuff. Right, yeah. discipline. Yeah, but that's not what discipline <laughs> is. It really Bullshit. isn't. <laughs> okay, well, this is a kind of getting to the this is getting to the emotional parts as to why we do what we do, right? Uh, like yeah. this is like because we've our been through personal, this. We've um, felt the crushing of the system. Sure, let's let's say it that way. Uh, well, go on. <laughs> Maybe I'll let you monologue. Go for it. The floor is yours. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're definitely sucked into a, an entire conundrum of do this, do, don't do that, because it it makes you a moral person, it makes you an amoral person. But uh, these kind of black and white uh, ideals are, you know, just by being black and white, you can probably tell that if you don't have context, it, shit's not going to fly properly. I don't have much to monologue about that, and like I think it's all self-explanatory. But I don't suppose that's the case for everybody. Um, I'm not good at monologues. <laughs> it was worth a shot. I need I, I need audience. It's, it's tough because you get kind of like distracted a little bit, and then you get in your head. And yeah, no, I, I I got a lot to say about it. It's just that I don't think a lot of it is um, necessary to say right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's a uh, it's it's flavor. It's good flavor for uh, for what we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but could we uh, probably hop off that train and see if we can get back on the rails here? Yeah, or? yeah. So I like I think we've uh, we've gone through uh, quite a lot. We we jump back to computation, talking about making uh, formalizing processes within a domain, and all this kind of stuff. And then that's where you you're applying this this matrix of agents and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the importance of having them apply the, uh, a model to understand a model to be interfacing with the uh, the artifacts which are, are are being sent along a carrier to this is how to do the, this protocol for this process this one for that and then um, overlay that with the mimetic model so that yeah. all of that is isomorphic so that with. whatever domain you're <clears throat> in is being a part of the whole the overall the whole um, so have we? Did we go through enough of the the computation aspects of it? Is there anything that we didn't? I mean, like, we could go over the details of it, but that's going to be probably more for people who are interested in how to do it, um, uh, which is more of a development process to begin with, and it's it's, it's 
It, it, it's academic in nature. So, like, you'd have to be, like, sitting there and studying what the right. hell you're doing to begin with. And what, what, you're, getting, what you're getting out of that is, is um, basically the processes that are happening within a domain that the agents are taking part in. Yeah, it, give, it, it, bring, it sheds light on, uh, like, uh, if this, then that. If that, then this. Yeah. Um, it, gives a, it gives an ability to create a technical specification, if you will, for what needs to happen. Yeah, operations. Um, it's the kind of stuff that's like, uh, normally in this current uh, structure of society, it'll be part of the professional landscape, you know, like where you solve problems. Uh, mm -hmm. do, using procedures and uh, all of these uh, fancy wordings and having all of these um, uh, regulations, restrictions, and whatnot. So this is the, this is the same landscape. So if you, if, if that's yep. if that's your cup of tea kind of deal, mm -hmm. this is where you would go into like okay, well in that we landscape, how do I that. formally uh, address a problem and whatnot? But you really have to be in into sort of like uh, this this uh, process this is where we're moving though right like yeah. that's that's what yeah. the card game is es so, essentially so there is a there's an aspect to creating these initiatives right but this is not the whole bit this is just that part uh, there's the fulfillment part of it uh, so not everybody is comfortable with uh, planning right some people are prefer the execution mm -hmm. and so uh, together you know like you can have people who do mostly planning and, st and people who do mostly execution, but still, but but not sheltered away from each other, right? Like, this is the other key component to the whole uh, framework is that uh, tradi the traditional schema, these people are completely isolated from one another. They don't communicate. Uh, they're, they're managed by a third entity altogether that doesn't understand either of them. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, has to do all these translations without that understanding uh, called management. Typical, yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's it's all about like having the, those same layers, but not having them uh, isolate one from the other. <coughs> so, uh, so having them all integrated mm -hmm. into a, a, again one unified whole. Yep. I'm just kind of thinking of a, a distinction between a, an established domain uh, where you already have kind of processes set up and then it like initiatives outside of that like I have a one-off thing or I have this or this mm -hmm. needs to be done is there really even a difference like a customer comes into a bookstore and has an I want a book that's an initiative basically right yeah but it's not gonna be out that's the relation that's the whole relationship of abstract and concrete anything concrete is literally always unique but it's always expressed in terms of something that's abstract which is literally uh, never is right um, so uh, right unless the abstraction don't exist yet and that's kind of this is kind of a this is getting into again a reflection uh, uh, the reflection pro uh, property of everything like even if it is new, it's actually just a reflection of something that's that, that's already been happening in some way. Right. Um, like for instance, writing is not something new. Writing yeah. is something that you've been doing internally um, through your developed APS. The APS isn't new. Um, it's just a more developed version of the uh, concrete, uh, the, the more concrete animal neural networks that you know have concrete responses to the environment. Right. It's just mm -hmm. been layered into a, a, an extra layer of calculation so all of these things are actually just further reflections of, of already existing things so there's nothing new under the sun and there's always everything new under the sun at the same time yep same as it ever was that's the sort of perspective that uh, this is coming from like you can and you cannot at the same time you can make generalizations you, as long as uh, you, you keep in mind that everything is unique at the same time like that's a generalization in and of itself right everything is unique so right there is no escaping both happenings at the same time and, and it's not there is no point in fighting <laughs> this problem like it's not a problem to fight mm -hmm. um, no it's expected 
you know, very expected. Every sentence is unique. Every word in that sentence has been used before, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that. Oh, that's actually, um, if we, got, if we uh, refer back to uh, sentient, uh, no, uh, not sentient, uh, synthetic neural computation, the existence of a pattern actually ha has two phases. One is the, con uh, the cons uh, constricting, which is it's taking uh, uh, the infinite number of kinds of signals, yeah. a aka variations. You're on talking the, about abstracting. Yeah. So if you have a variations on a carrier, that's a signal, right? Like a carrier is a certain uh, medium. You etch a notch in it, that's a signal, right? Like if you have a clay tab tablet, you made a mark in it, that's a symbol. If you make marks on it over um, over another dimension, like a spatial dimension, uh, s sequentially, for example, right? You're uh, you're creating a pattern of signals, right? So there's mm -hmm. two aspects to this pattern. One is called constricting, which is takes. It's constricting in that it takes uh, markings and condenses them into a symbol set. So it's constricting in the sense that it is saying that these markings I recognize, the rest I do not. So it's, it's just picking out a very small subset of uh, potential signals, uh, com signal combinations as meaningful. But then there's an expansive phase to patterning, right. which is called the grammar. <coughs> which yep. ta which takes those uh, uh, symbols to their and combines them in different combinations, mm -hmm. and so those combinations can grow into an infinity. Right. So there's a constricting portion to a pattern, and an expansive por portion to a pattern, and so from uh, from from that uh, perspective, you have a limitation and uh, an expansion of, of a, prolifer a proliferation. And actually, this is kind of the same actual problem with, with reality tunnels that you can get and all of that kind of stuff. I think I'm getting ahead of myself with that explanation. Wait, what was the last sentence you said? Uh, reality. How does that apply to that? <clears throat> reality tunnels? Um, because oh, a reality because you're tunnel having, is a constricted like part, a and then you're expanding that reality tunnel into its final, uh, into what it, what it creates, right? Well, reality tunnels being composed of yeah. these constricted of what's possible. symbol portion you constrict what's possible and then you create all the potential out of that mm -hmm. possibility the expected yep well, that's the relationship there I forget what it was uh, but I forget why I started that conversation though uh, just a good point <laughs> I suppose no it, it's very worth noting uh, because a, a lot of it is uh, reliant on this uh, phenomenon so uh, that's that mm -hmm. That, that phenomena that I described is what we will call a pattern. Cons uh, a phase of constriction of, sim of signals into a symbol set, and then the usage of that symbol set in, in a grammar to expand it into uh, potentially infinite variations. Yep. Very typical. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Well, it's been a good run so far. We're a couple hours in there, I guess. Yeah, we've got one more. Mm hmm You think there's enough to uh, touch on the gibberish that you were trying to string together in this last section here? Well, so... Um, yeah, so computational schema then uh, implements the agent carrier protocol schema, implements... Um, what did I write there? Computation. The first computational schema. I don't know. Anyways, it was the oh, so the whole <coughs> embedding that until we finally get to the model schema, which is used for the deck protocol. Mm -hmm. So uh, the what he, what we're trying to string here is this: we have the computational schema, which talks about domains, and then we have the agents that use computational schemas, right? So the first things first is for the computational schema to model the agents. Right, so the computational schema, this is like 
the sort of the most concrete formulation of what's happening within a domain. Just these actors have to do this for this economy. Yeah, we're just naming what's what, what it's doing, why it's doing those things. And then on top of that, we are having this agent matrix. So the agent matrix is what we're talking about, what agents are doing, why are they doing these things, and blah, blah, blah. So we're taking the first schema and using it to describe um, agents and and, and communication and protocols and what they do. So the computational is what, what we're saying in general has to be happening within this economy, and the agent matrix is the, is the actors that do it. Is, yeah, like, okay, you are playing this role. You must wait for this agent to give you this signal, mm-hmm. and then you can do that. You can put this signal on this carrier. So, so to bring that back, we now need to use this understanding and model it in the first in the first place. In the computation model, we have to model these agents, we have to model their communications, we have to model their uh, protocols and whatnot, right? And when we do that, um, we create the framework mm-hmm. for those agents. So first, and then, first step, sorry, first step is you're kind of just having a kind of layperson understanding of the economics of the stories, collecting all the stories of what happens in an interaction space, a domain space. Yeah. And then on, on top of that, you're taking um, another model another model with this agent matrix these, these agents are doing actually this this and that and this and, is how and, to do it and bringing that back into the original uh, computational schema and saying okay it's a little more nuanced than this mm-hmm. you actually have agents having to do this and do this perform this heuristic and that right so you, and then you take this first dom- problem domain and then you say okay how these these a this agent model that I have that of people who do things they need to do this exact uh, modeling of this domain so that means that the agent model itself needs to do the exact same thing that brought it about so we're modeling these agents we're modeling all their the, the matrix and whatnot and in that model we're also including the fact that they're modeling domains to begin with so we're modeling domains one of the domains Shit, was that a third that is that the third that we're adding on no okay so we're modeling domains to begin with mm-hmm. one of the domains that we're modeling is the agents that communicate right um, so uh, the agents that communicate do a whole bunch of communication and whatnot. One of the communications that they do is modeling domains again. So we're taking right. the model that created them, we're giving that model to them as something they also do, right? And then so this is a behavior. Yeah, a behavior. Yeah, so so we're teaching them to be themselves. To share models. To to be themselves in in actuality. And then we are topping that off with another model so that these agents uh, will reflect it through uh, uh, by, by saying, okay, so these agents are now modeling domains. So the domain that we're giving them is the mimetic model. So now the domain that they're modeling right through this heuristic is uh is the entire uh, model of the uh, of themselves so the final domain that's being modeled by the agents through the modeling system is the model <sighs> <laughs> i think we almost got it i mean i'm sure it's going to confuse uh, everybody You can be assured that another diagram is going to come Ooh. around. What are you <laughs> doing? Are you tired? No, nope. finding the perfect contrast and white balance. Here we go. There. No. Nope. Yeah. There it is. Cool. Just want a little more definition in like our shirts and stuff, you know. It's all good now. Yeah. So the final piece, did you actually get to that? There was one on top of this. Because we wanted to get to the essentially 
um, the model schema, the the uh, card box game. Well, this is where method. the card box game is coming into play. You have a domain model. The domain model yeah. has agency and the matrix inside of it to uh, tell it how uh, what a agent to which, model how agents communicate, which is another model on top of it, sort of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the agents themselves model the domain model that we're, we're just describing that models them, right. if they're doing the same thing in their communication, they can model anything as well. Those a th that process itself can model anything. Yeah. Um, and if we constrain that ability to model uh, through a particular model, which is we what we call the medic model. Right. then what they will model it through is the understanding of the fact that they're modeling themselves mm -hmm. to begin with. Yeah. So this is the whole, the completion of the entire self-reference that uh, I'm trying to keep, keep mm -hmm. hammering into. Good. And so once we have that, how does the final cusp of that model come into play? Like, what does that look like? Well, this is where the card game actually makes much more sense because it's an ability to externalize all these different types of kinds of protocol on a piece of paper and describe what that kind of, what this mm -hmm. really convoluted stack is actually going to do. And you begin with modeling on paper. The, the schema of how you're actually using the paper to, to do the modeling. Right. Without even I, modeling anything again, aside from the how the modeling of the modeling it goes. It's, it's, it's all in, 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 in and this is why it took us two years since <laughs> since we've been waiting for the uh, deck model schema to make any kind of uh, 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 relevant sense to uh, to the rest of the work that we've been doing as well. Mm -hmm. So this is yep. one. This is why it's one of the meta products, and in fact, it's the meta product that deals with pragmatism, right? It's the uh, it's the, the the card box game is the uh, chop wood carry water counterpart. It's like you need to do this, write that thing down. So how, what's involved, how is it constrained? Because you can write anything down. We have a whole bunch of modeling theory that tells you what you're doing to begin with when you write things down. And so what we're doing is we're we're asking that like a, as you're making a mark on that piece of paper it means this when you're making the next mark it means that you're doing so it tells you you're going to be doing this you're going to be doing that you're going to be doing that and that's based on b both on what you're doing now by marking it down and what it is you're marking down in the first place to bring it all together like I mean that's all simple stuff right but it involves commitment to this stuff and so that's kind of what we pick up with uh, having all this kind of theoretical uh, right. model within model within model kind of stuff to here's a card game to play here's a card box what 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 is the card box how does it relate to any of that and what the hell are we mm -hmm. talking about yeah it, 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 <laughs> it of course really did need a context you can't just start making cards even if you have the schema it's mm -hmm. like okay what it, it's going to immediately break apart whenever you try to do anything unless you know like we were saying when you embed the mimetic model that try the third part into the system that's when you that's when you expand out into the whole yeah and, and it you gives you that. the context yeah because otherwise if you don't do that if you don't embed the mimetic model into the domain modeling problem you can model any domain and I mean, this is what yep. civilization is really doing. It's yep. model constraint involved, right. and it doesn't actually know what to do with it. Well, and it, it's um, aside from you know proliferate the same more of the it, same. It simplifies this the whole um, the tree of life by uh, cutting it down to basically nothing but a shell of itself, but the profit motive for example, all you need is money mm -hmm. because the rest of the system accepts money and you can do whatever you want with money. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> so it, 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 again, it's that laundering effect. Money has that laundering, currency has that laundering effect. It mean, it, mean, it, it, it takes away mm -hmm. um, the producer and the, the produce consumption variable, variable is entirely disconnected along 
a single bus, a single uh, uh, information highway to the point of where you don't recognize what comes from where. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. That's the laundering effect. When you don't know what comes from where, it's you can't keep track of it, and that's actually um, contrary to what you want to be doing with this what you want to be doing with the situation because mm -hmm. accountability requires that this doesn't happen like uh, you can't use currency uh, for accountability the two concepts don't work together there's also a, res a responsibility to being a commander of goods in that you select that which is provided to you in the most wholesome way. I don't believe that. It's it's a at least because a um, what do you call it a bridge? A I stop think gap I, measure. I, I think this is a way to uh, shift the responsibility from the producer that's going to produce regardless, right? Yeah, the producer is going to produce. But if they're regardless. unless they're not supported. If, if nobody buys their thing then they just right but, but here's the thing again because you're you, you are a producer you are um, more inclined to find your niche rather shift based upon demand right if you're okay. if your thing is yeah, not in yeah, demand yeah, yeah, yeah. what yeah. you're what you're no. more inclined to do is not shift what you're doing but rather find a different place to shove your so demand, I'm describing a, a transitionary that's that's the extent of that I, I take your point completely <laughs> um, in that this is still going to be a, a corporation driven by profit essentially oh yeah yeah you, even though you can try to shape view, them to be better I view to be one and the same to be honest um, in that uh, you just operate under these conditions no matter what and you let right death, yeah, you, I let, wish, you, uh, let, you let death do its thing products um, like from a, a government or regulatory products should be as transparent as they as they could be and and that should be regulated that they must have country of origin they must have oh this yeah, and yeah. That. like they're trying to get rid of that literally not to to give the consumer not even to know where in the world this thing came from like that that is a step in the wrong direction oh yeah but it's a it's a step in a very understandable direction from why right uh, in, in terms of what's going on like uh, we, we can't be surprised by this. In fact, this is the kind of thing that, that, that what we're talking about is really why this keeps happening. Mm -hmm. And what the fuck is wrong with that to begin with? Um, this is commodification. This is the removal of context. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is specifically uh, the idea that yeah. oh, it's the, the name same. this is the same that as the that. name <laughs> is more important than the thing the name is representing sure even, so when you even do deeper that, than that yeah. so but when yeah. you so when you do that you you've got no uh, recourse you you, you you're breaking the framework that mm -hmm. made the thing. You're, you're, you have you're no now, no information to make a decision upon. You, the black box can be switched on you, basically. Mm -hmm. and there's a recourse there. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, clearly, this is uh, fundamentally not within our scope of interest. Um... <coughs> Uh, the, the the proposal that we're after is entirely uh, transparent in the same in the sense that uh, all movement happens through demand rather than through uh, uh, the rather than the other way around where demand is created based on the supply. Right, but you're always gonna have established industries or whatever you call it, like oh no, a factory. Like, uh, I, like, okay, again, you've got a demand, fine, but this is a thing that's available on the market. Right? It, it that's exists that, on that's the, the plateau. That's, you can have it or not. That is the plateau, if you will. And that's why you have to deal with plateaus. If we, if that wasn't the case, plateaus mm -hmm. would not be a subject to begin with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we need a way to interface so with, with uh, what's existing. A, a plateau is basically taking the uh, available set of commodities and 
reinterpreting them back into the framework of the model and saying, okay, given these circumstances, how do we take pure potentiality and uh, utilize it, All right? Yep. If our environment is commodified, then we have to, we have to utilize land. If our um, sustenance is commodified, we have to use produce. If our commodified, then we have to use our social, um, yeah, social system. If our um, mm -hmm. first, um, is commodified, then we have to use the appropriate manners and all of that stuff and uh, professionals and blah 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 and uh, you just work with the mythology that we have yeah. like there, there, there's no fighting the mythology if you nope. try to do that it's just going to swallow you whole and mm -hmm. there, there's that I mean true story <laughs> great success uh, no not really uh, that, so no we're not revolutionaries we're not <laughs> We're not, we're, we're not, it makes no sense to be any of those things. Um, it's just going to perpetuate the exact same problems over and over and over again. None of this is a solution. Uh, Non-participatory uh, is not, again, the answer. Um, right. Go build a cabin in the woods. Yeah, like, uh, whose land are you building the cabin on? How long who's till, who's woods? How long till they come and get you? <laughs> yeah, like it, it makes no fucking difference. Um, so none of these things are really what we're after. Um, but the utility of what we have uh, is still viable. Mm -hmm. It's still always viable. Yeah, none of, none of that matters. We're not dead um, yet. <laughs> what matters is having good self-organization and good community organization. Yeah, and again, the idea of plateau is to simply indicate that um, regardless of where you're, what you're standing on, that's just the base where you can move from. Um, the potential is still pure, uh, and its purity mm -hmm. isn't. Its purity isn't on. It's it's it isn't based on what we've given so much so as what is um, po what is possible. What's given right. only, what's given gives uh, kind of a slanted picture because uh, reality is effectively, and I get, I, this is more philosophical in, the, in a way, but uh, quantum in the sense that um, it's probability driven rather than a linearly driven. Right. Um, and there's always those edge possibilities. Right. And and you know like uh, what happened like you, you get this from personal stories all the time the, the, the anecdotal story of like oh this event interfered with my decision and therefore oh this event interfered with my decision and therefore right and all of these things are completely out of the blue in terms of like whatever progression you might be thinking of happening right there you know like sure we're based on our mythologies we're thinking oh if this happens and this happens and this happens this person must be mad right and that's the thing those are mythologies um, they don't mythologies don't always fail to capture um, where they come from and that's the pure potential that they're from uh, of existence right <coughs> this is uh, the soundbite effect right so the soundbite effect neglects all of the things that uh, you know created the person that makes the sound bite to begin with and all of those things in the context enable this person to make that sound bite and yet um, the, the, the sound bite has nothing to do with that person they're just regurgitating something else to begin with so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a huge big ass mass confusion of, 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 over all of that agencies and sound bites and agency itself is is, is, a, is a crazy concept um the be I, I think it's best represented by the movie to begin with to, 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 to be honest like the Matrix right and the scene where like you know like that granny cutting her vegetables on her kitchen table when Neo just bursts into her apartment going like oh, I'm just trying to escape these guys right and out of nowhere, that granny becomes a complete the knife, like the a, knife. yeah, like a, <laughs> becomes like this complete like uh, agency yeah. of the system 
out of nowhere. Like, this is a kind of situation we're faced with um, in reality. Yep. And that people turn on you. People... Hey, someone bursts into your house. <laughs> what are you going to do? Not, <laughs> uh, not even that. Like, a friend comes to you, like, it needs money. Right? Like, how many times have we been in that place? And you, like, you, oh, yeah. you, you need help and you cannot ask anybody you know intimately because even you, that yeah. because you can't because you because you know if you ask for, like if I ask you for money for example you won't have rent for the next month like it's just weird shit like this likely yeah um, like we cannot even help each other at this point mm-hmm. um, yeah so like the, so the we come pri- to, primitive defensive mechanism so, just to just to keep surviving right and so <laughs> and so I come to you and all of a sudden you become this agent that says no blah 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 I gotta maintain this account yeah meanwhile we're talking about taking a piss somewhere or having a, a glass of water uh, no wait let me go ask my wife <laughs> beyond that like I, I remember a scene I was sitting in a pub uh, and somebody on a very it was very humid that day and somebody walked in just asked for a glass of water they weren't going to be a patron yeah. they just weren't going to be a patron and uh, what, what do you think the response was too bad exactly we're talking about a person being turned away from a tap that is free right like we're we're talking about like something that isn't in the economy itself it does not involve a monetary transaction (laughs) for the for the pay for the business itself it would not involve a monetary transaction uh, they refused him water on a hot day simply because there was no or a bed uh, to just sleep on the floor at least it's inside you know so this is part of the song he comes back well I don't know she kind of funny he asks his wife I know everybody funny now you funny too <laughs> I don't think I recognize this reference <laughs> uh, it's uh, George Thorogood okay one uh, bourbon one scotch and one oh beer. okay 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 <laughs> yeah Th- that comes from the same disconnect it comes from like people being worked to death having no recourse and then the only people they know judge them for being <laughs> for lack of a better word like spent yeah. done like their lives are their lives are in the they don't have a life and be and the people that are supposed to have a life with cannot even come to terms with them because the external system is grinding everybody to such a to such an extent that that nobody can be human to mm-hmm. anyone else yeah cuz you feel these constraints put these constraints put on your own shoulders you know if you step out you're going to be the agents surrounding you are going to attack you Mm-hmm. My landlord will attack me. The wife so, will attack me. This will attack me. So you have to play the same role. So you have to be the same agent. Yeah. You become Agent so, Smith right away. Yep. Yeah, big trap. Mm-hmm. And again, the the other thing is like, oh, I love the fact that the entire matrix comes together uh, to a conclusion where the entire thing is taken over by one of the agents, just a single monotonous individual so to speak that represents everybody because that's really where it's headed um, lack of ability to differentiate one context from another mm-hmm. just one single unified yeah crush everything else uh, entity it's, um, it's it's almost like a perfect uh, metaphor for um, the kind of problem we're uh, looking at uh, in these discussions damn Hey, did you want to take a five? Mm-hmm. Take five. All right. So I don't know if we will be back after this five. We'll see. I don't five th- dish. Maybe it's getting. We're getting late. So we may call it. We may be back. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We didn't get into the card game, so maybe we can tackle a little bit of that. We might. We might. All right. But we set the stage for it finally. Heck yeah. Be right back.
right, we're we're back, but we're sort of we're only half halfway back. <laughs> so <laughs> we're talking about <coughs> the sentient machine as a valid final guild, the final frontier. Yeah, at the end state for the state, so to speak. Um, sentient machine does not necessarily refer to artificial intelligence, although it could. Signature machine really means um, the social structure is uh, as mechanical as it is on top of us. Uh, it can become sentient, and in being so, it can actually um, behave just like a sentient being and right. take care of its uh, actual uh, fundamental needs uh, in the self-preservation ca category. We were it's saying like basically to model itself with the mimetic model. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so this uh, so this basically runs through the idea of technology, but also through the idea of cognitive um, mentality, if you will. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we still got a bit of time left. We can chill. Yep. Yeah, so we're we're basically into overtime right now, a little bit. I think. Mm. Like, I feel like we got a good, pretty good stream out of that one. Like, yeah, I think we're we've exhausted our um, fuel, if you will. We can only just uh, sort of reflect on it now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like that we uh, we we kind of created an agenda up front with like five minutes, five ten minutes of just intense. Like, okay, what do we actually want to talk about? Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it. Um, and we wrote down a, on a eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper uh, just mm -hmm. you know the list kind we're, of thing. we're starting to plan ourselves out guys mm -hmm. <laughs> becoming professionals so it went a little bit smoother you know although I do like the ambiguity like sometimes I like just diving in and and especially because I know that I I have a lot of things that are unresolved that I can yeah. just self direct towards them. that's actually why I want to do a bit of a more of a question answer kind of a thing sometime with you if possible Sure. Maybe if you can look. So is this? Start um, now. This is more like a Q and A is definitely a good idea. This is not a Q and A exactly. Well, it has been. Yeah, like we direct and guide kind of thing. Mm. You know, um, a lot more of it um, often has been just I know like you've got some kind of vision has sparked on certain port certain parts of like the the technicalities of like the model and how it how it works. But I haven't been able to concretely uh, implement that in my worldview and in, in my view of it. So, like, I can just kind of at, keep poking at certain directions, right? And this mm. gets back to that mimetic foreground background thing that, that we yeah. talked about. Like, I, I kind of provide a stable uh, initiative on my end, and very often you have to just keep. Uh, warping around that, like your your vision has to yeah, keep it adjusting. To, yeah, it does. Um, because uh, my vision is going to be obviously skewed by only one set of experiences, um, so it does need augmentation in terms of that. Right, but I, I get it's it has something to do with the the difference between the academic and pragmatic temperament. Uh, just in Part the way in the way that you you are always more comfortable speaking in timeless archetypal speech. It's because like it has I, nothing to do with anything practically, but it of course it's correct. <laughs> it just doesn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah, that, 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 that's the problem of relativity. Actually, um, relativity enables um, arbitrariness. Right. Right. Um, uh, this is this is actually why context and is it's such not a jab it's not a jab no no <laughs> it, it, that's actually why context becomes such a huge deal is because if you don't do that right. if you don't uh, ground it into a, a, a natural context then what you're relating to might not actually be uh, relevant and this is like the story this is like our stories kind of you could say both of ours that's just having in Remember intersecting the narrative, the idea of yeah. intersecting a narrative of where somebody is in their position in time yeah. space, and you intersect that by learning their story and yeah. making a relationship. Without sure. that, what do you have? Nothing. 
Yeah. And it's always like that. Every it's always it builds up from the bottom to the top. So you've but got concrete, that's concrete. You're building up to abstract into me yeah. mimetic. But here's why it becomes really, really hard to actually um, engage in that, especially in the current again, context, in that we have such an abstract playing field from which to drop on that um, mm -hmm. the concrete terms that we use for one domain versus another domain don't mean the same things and when we speak to each other because of a because we don't have the heuristic to understand that we're building up domains in the first place if we don't utilize that mm. the entire conversation that we just had yeah if we don't utilize that as part of that uh, awareness then we end up running with a story that makes absolute po uh, absolute sense to the person speaking it and zero sense to the person hearing it that's a very common heuristic too i think that everybody has their own piece of the puzzle and that you're each sort of working in your own domain and like so there's so many little sound bites that kind of get passed between each other in these uh yeah. decentralized but a sound but autonomous a sound bite. territories whatever yeah, and a soundbite in one mythology is not the same thing as a soundbite in another mythology. And uh, mm -hmm. if you got those things confused, if you don't have like the universal sort of understanding that, hey, you're working from mythologies to begin with, right? You're not modeling that as part of your uh, uh, heuristic, as it, as it were. This is why we're embedding this right. model this inside. This is the, the whole meta narrative story. Right. We're, if, if you were not to embed all of these little steps inside of how to model models, of how to model the agents, of how to model the model mm -hmm. within the agents right. to begin with and make it all happen, if you don't do any of those things, then you, the, 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 the sound bites that you're getting are actually not going to be the sound bites that you're actually getting. Uh, <laughs> you're building a di different picture out of them. Um, uh, and yeah, and this the, this is so. Mm -hmm. the, we. Why this is so important is because we are so isolated within mm -hmm. the society that we be basically become tribes of single people um, trying to make it in a world of right. only enemy tribes. And we need this story that unifies us, this meta narrative that we can share a story. This isn't, nobody can share stories. This anymore. isn't natural to our existence, uh, in the sense that we are communal people. <laughs> we, we are by no means tribes of single individuals that, that the idea of individuality is, it makes sense contextually you know, like you are not that animal, you are not uh, the tiger that chases you. Yes, that makes sense, but it makes zero sense. And like, I am in debt to society with mm -hmm. some finances. Like, that those things are so alien to humanity that. Uh, mm hmm. It's this this layering I'm, that yeah, we can keep adding carriers and I'm not prepared for this particular topic to explain it properly, so mm -hmm. I'm not really going to go into details as to what I think about here. Mm -hmm. But I can make things can get very off course as we yeah. But that's the real <laughs> that's the, that's the fundamental note I'm making is that um, and and. and and here's the kicker like I'm guilty of this I am absolutely fundamentally am incapable of uh, doing this properly um, in terms of like this ideology that I'm speaking is, is, is very fundamentally hard to do it's, it's a matter of a, a glimpse into something right it's not mm -hmm. a matter of like oh yeah right I'm now totally like within and in, this tu in tune with the universe this so is the each person having their own piece of the puzzle we have a piece yeah. You have a piece. I have a piece. So this particular piece, I believe, is 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 fundamental in in, in shaping the the next thought and the next thought and the next thought, so to speak. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, yeah, it becomes your background. And, and 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 the purpose of this video is to 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 share that, right? Is to 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 express that. Uh, and the reason we're doing that to begin with is is the expression of it is also. 
the, the doing of it. The doing of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's true. There's that. It's 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 it, it it's a matter of stepping into it as a matter of uh, it's a truth, uh, as, as as it's usually used. Um, if it's a truth, then then, then you you function through it. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the education is the first step of such a system. Yeah, like this is it existing. For my the fact se- that other eyes are seeing this. For, for myself, like it's a matter of just recognizing where I need to move. It's not a matter of I have moved there. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's just oh a lot of it yeah it's just uh, so 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 this discussion is actually to uh, peers not to uh, right peers not not to not 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 a uh, not an two injunction. masters as a guest it's not an injunction to like yeah we got it figured out and let's mm-hmm. let's do this about it. like rather this is this is how we see this is how we see it should work and uh, look I think if we try. Yep. If if we if we would try to to to, to uh, step into that ourselves, then something can fundamentally shift um, from personal and to, from the group dynamic. But beyond that, it's it's just a matter of explore, exploratory. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's incredibly exploratory. It's um, not assertive. For one, the, and this is to the point that you're probably part of the point you're getting at is that yeah, we, like we express it, because that's what how you have to do it, and you you almost have to presume have this assumptiveness that you are correct, in order that somebody will say, okay, no, actually you're wrong, and we wish for that. This is what you hope for is that somebody well, has their own idea which is contrary to yours, and then you can negotiate on a peer to peer basis. Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean? It never gets to that. It always hits surface level. Oh, you're, you're that type of a thing. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. the way with you. <laughs> yeah, there's that part to it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'd like to point out that he, there is a, there's a, a matter of a, a authority going on that needs to be addressed. Um, uh, the, the the whole discussion re- the Good whole point. discussion. This, the whole discussion revolves around uh, fiat and uh, the problem. The problem that fiat introduces. This is the problem of fiat. Yep. Yeah, the problem that fiat introduces into every uh, into every systemic discussion to begin with. In that, oh, okay, if this is the system, then by definition, so this is the cause. When of the in systems. nature, in nature, when you're having evolution within an ecosystem, you don't take all the variations of of a certain animal with different traits and say, oh, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. This is just how it is that everyone gives their own authoritative expression, which is their own being. That's where it all comes from. Yeah, so so the model is essentially authoritative in that sense, in that there's no... It's not a matter of dictatorship or Mm -hmm. whatnot. It's diversity but the, me- is but the it mechanics, is. but the mechanics of nature uh, do dictate a model, right? Uh, nature can be said to be uh, a particular kind of machine. What it cannot be called is a market machine, right? And I think that that's the main mistake that uh, cognitive processes hmm. make is in that they're that treating be a typical it mistake. in that they're treating it like a market uh, as a value exchange system the system only sees the system right but it, but uh, as a value exchange system it doesn't work it's not a value exchange system because values are right. uh, values are extremely contextual within well, nature the value is is within a system nature doesn't have values nature doesn't value this or that Values exist in nature through context only. Right. So, sense context, you don't get value. Not no real value, like no natural value. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the market machine. Yeah. Yeah. And, values, and again, this is where the values mistake, generated the without mistake context. happens. Um, yeah. That value that's taken out of context. That's where the mistake happens. Mm-hmm. So value is an amazing question too. Value is a question of power, and power is a question of the of medium, right? Uh, capacity. Mm-hmm. Me, um, so these things and how things uh, slot into the the greater whole. 
what val what uh, different pieces of this uh, the carrier that you have access to the different commodities or right right so so if you take if you take all of that out and just use these things as arbitrary um, uh, terminology to uh, say this is valuable but this is not then effectively right. you're disconnecting um, the idea of value from mm -hmm. the idea the, from from it, its its function in how in, is in value universe. calculated that's the question if you're calculating value from your own being in context in context fully in context that's different from a value which is passed on from culture or whatever yeah and uh, entropy plays a huge role in it because the value that can be adopted from a culture is in is infinite what it could be is an infinite question, hmm. right? A value can be given to you without right. context. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, it it could, in other words, decay in its in state of of, of appearance of yeah. artifacts very vastly. It can just go to nothing. And, that, and that. so that that brings up to the point that if it's not experienced, right? If it's not experienced truly for oneself, is it valuable? What's like? How can it be said to be valuable? Um, what the, 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 there is the real question of fiat um, do we inject value simply due to the uh, uh, extrinsic authoritative sort of mechanism or is value uh, mm -hmm. instilled through the experience of the in, of quote unquote the in individual that has put that value into play and seen right. what, what it's for. Yes, of course. And so we would say the model has to have a say in what is valued. Period. It has to go through the loop of the model. Yeah, it cannot be. It cannot be simply tethered to yes. one and uh, manipulated through it. That's some hot shit, man. Yeah. So value is incredibly interconnected into uh, carriers and mediums and. Uh, and capacities mm -hmm. and more important or maybe importantly how they all tie together in the mimetic model right because value builds on top of value yeah, like it's a brick it's a brick wall right like bricks by bricks by bricks build the wall and uh, so um, without mm -hmm. the bricks there is no wall without the wall there is no bricks um, and that True. sort of thing and, and so val it's again context is if you don't, if you get anything out of it, is that context shapes absolutely everything. It's like it's it's essentially the same. Well, this is intersecting the narrative. This is the devotional uh, lesson. This is the same insight that uh, relativity had. This is the same insight of relativity. I, I, I as far as I can tell, like uh, what the space of possible potentiality is is shaped by what is there and what is there is shaped by the space of potentiality right. back in, in yeah, the yeah that's a, an interesting uh, so matter expression. makes matter makes the geometry the geometry makes the matter right it's, a, it's, it's the same relativity theory in a different context put together um, you, you get the same thing with quantum mechanics yeah in, it's in, in no, a spectacle. It's, it's literally the idea that Everywhere that every quote unquote point in of space in the universe that you could exist at has its own perspective and context. Right. Basically. <laughs> frame of reference. In yeah. relativity this is called the frame of reference. So mm -hmm. in this frame of reference the sequence of events happens A, B, C. In an, in another uh, frame of reference, the sequence could be B A C. Right. Events would right. switch. Sure. Yeah. So we gotta be. Uh, th this is uh, this is the same uh, phenomena. Um, it's just a universal phenomena, both in perception and in the physical universe. And the more we take lessons from, like, the more we interpret the lessons in both ends, from both ends, the 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 more ubiquitous uh, the the uh, model becomes. Like physics lessons are very relevant to it, for sure. I don't think that I don't think the uh, spectacle would even work without the idea of mm -hmm. quantum mechanics. 
it's really interesting to have such a it feels like a very concrete link to um, physical reality quote unquote yeah from it, it, these it, high high flying concepts it, it, it is absolutely based on metaphor like like don't get me wrong I'm right. not trying to. Uh, yeah, no. It, it, yeah, when I say that, yeah, it's, it's, like, a, symbol, well, this, it's a symbolic. The universe link. exists as a set of points, each yeah. having its own perspective. No, this is a totally symbolic <laughs> link, a, represent, uh, a link between representations, um, or a link between protocols. We're not talking about mm-hmm. anything, fun, any fundamental substrate or any of that stuff. In fact, the uh, whole idea of modeling the protocols will show that. Um, in that uh, yeah. there's, a, there's a thing called coding, encoding, and decoding. And a coding is when you have a similar protocol happening through different types of carriers. So for instance, speech versus written language. So you see it as more parental in the holonic uh, So on the upper layering. on the upper layers, mm-hmm. it's one protocol is being utilized in both stacks but the stacks degrade into a completely different carrier. So sound versus paper. Okay, yeah, yeah. But English mm-hmm. versus English. Right? And it's called coding. And so coding it, it would be the means, language. So, so you're converging at some higher level. Yeah, you're converging on the language yeah. English, but on one front you write coding. down the words. So they call it a coding and it, it's kind of yeah. transcending so, that idea. So coding is something that exists on a... On a, on a significant layer but is uh, divergent in its significant layer so right. paper Proceed. versus sound what were the other ones uh, coding decoding uh, encoding is taking that higher level pl- protocol and uh, moving it to the lower le- layer substrate so you have an encoding towards paper encoding towards sound Fine. Okay. Yeah. So you're different carriers. We're describing the not a hierarchical system, but a system that 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 converges. from each point has its own set of constraints. And it converges. And, and it converges on other on the higher levels. So English you expect, being yeah. written, being spoken, uh, it, it's this taken. is what allows it to do that. Mm-hmm. Because multiple stacks, which would otherwise be differently articulated, completely suddenly converge right in right certain points so points. so so with this relationship in place it's it's really a, a crazy game of meaning and the context and everything else oh yeah how have you been enjoying this uh, chart that I put up it's interesting I don't know what to do with it <laughs> like no I, I get it I the guy. I get it. What do you mean you don't know what to do with it? It just it's a drawing. It's a description of. No, no, I I get it. This is Cosmic's uh, um, latest and greatest, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm quite proud of him, by the way. But no, no, he's describing the meta narrative, the um, the the sort of like the 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 diplomatic dimension, if you will, also, right? Yeah, you, you, you're you, having diff- A, B, C, D, hyper narrative, different hyper-narrative. universes. We're assuming this is a, each. It could be a different person. A universe would be a hyper narrative, basically, right? And this is a the meta narrative together. Yeah, the 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 fact of this image that you're having multiple universes together, mm-hmm. like different perspectives, different different people walk humans walking past each other, yep. having completely different uh, universes and interpretations of what's going on around them. Mm-hmm. And the meta narrative happening between those those points, which is never touched by either of them, it's beautiful. The true meta narrative does exist there. The false meta narrative. You're le- saying the hyperspace point. The the hyperspace point, yes. <laughs> yeah. So the true meta narrative exists exactly where the hyperspace yeah, point is, yeah. whereas the false meta narrative, if you will, the uh, obfuscated one, would exist as the. Um, point of intersection of all of these right as a a false intersection if you will so so almost like you would take this entire circle including the intersections including the intersections yeah and and actually cross them here instead of keeping them apart you would cross them in right now they look they look separated right it looks like they converge on a dot but never touch right but if you were to touch them that would be the false impression 
Oh, that that there is an actual translation yeah. between one and the other. The, if you were to touch them, that would be a false point. So false right. point of convergence. So this is a, and the true point of convergence is where they're still separate. This is a, a, a good representation of that fact then. Mm -hmm. yep. And in that case, we can basically say uh, there's the obfuscated meta-narrative versus the uh, non. And the non-obfuscated meta-narrative is the one that doesn't try to put it all together. The one that tries to put it all together is going to run into self-contradiction. Goodell's law. Well, sure. The, yeah. No, like yeah, you can't have a you can't have a complete system without self contradiction. You can't look at this chart and say, okay, I have God level view, and understand every single universe. No, <laughs> that does not. You you, you can conceptually understand. Oh, there's a heuristic that happens, but I don't know how to relate to it hmm. necessarily. <laughs> the, so so the, there's we got to break this down a little bit here. There's there's some some nuances here to cosmic theory. Uh, we know the dimen dimensional intersection that seems clear. So he's got di in these these intersect points. Yeah, those are all um, hyper narratives. His idea of the indeterminate zone. You'll notice each universe has a core. Yeah, the core is like your normal reality. Foreground. Actually, it, it reminds me of uh, topology because yeah. it's what's right in front of you and what you're seeing and what exists and what, what, what is all part of that. But at any point, and here's his analogy, is that you, you can think about what's in your peripheral vision and even what's behind that. Yeah. Like it's, I, I know. It's, kind of, it's an analogical... He's taking it way too far. As, uh, I, I, th I feel right. he's taking so it too far but for himself. The question himself, is... But what yeah. does what does this do and it puts you into kind of an interesting point it's that this indeterminate zone actually contains all of the other universes and yet it's yours so this is a, a coherent model if if you take it that way so in the sense that it all contains the other universes quote unquote, quote unquote that's the um false false uh, right. mirror and we see that in the diagram and then the and, and then the, and the true mirror is still reflected through the false mirror by the way the true mirror is that yeah they are disconnected because they are actually traveling in their own languages and whatnot and what and whatever and every time you, you hit on the concept here it's not the same concept there right and so mm -hmm. you can't necessarily yeah, uh, unify the them intersection dimensional intersections yeah. here yeah you can't this is uh right yeah, dimensional exactly. interfaces so have interfaces dimensional interface dimensional interfaces have interfaces but what i'm talking about is seeing an interface when there is none right there's also going to be that situation so the light cone does not touch the other light cone right yeah and that's missing from this diagram, but that's actually captured by the fact that it's between the connections. Right. Yeah. There's, that, there, 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 there is a fundamental yeah. spot yeah. that's going to drive uncertainty into the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. And that uncertainty right. is going to like really destabilize this neat little marking. But the point of a, a model or a chart is to, to unfold, so, unfold that. Sure. And, and so this chart now becomes um, an example of a context. So in this context, these universes come together this way. In that context, these universes mean Fine. a different arrangement. Yeah, and you could model like... Uh, a bunch of people and together in an organization, yeah. each having their own view. And so as long as you see that fractal, we're good. Yeah, and that's, but if you that's miss represented that by the star. But if you miss that fractal, mm -hmm. you're back into systems thinking. Yeah. And that's the thing. The, the system is not capable of taking its own sense of uncertainty and carrying forward with it, right? It's not going to be able to uh, utilize any statement made that it doesn't recognize it uh, as a complete truth. So when a statement is thrown at it, it's a contradiction, which always happens because every system has this property if they're complex enough. Uh, mm -hmm. 
it's gonna go into a pain uh, pain mode. It's gonna be like pain does mode. not compute. It's not me. But that's the thing. Like every system, complex when it's complex enough, provides a kind of symbol set that, when strung together, will yield contradictions. Right. You can't get around it. And when it's that. Fine. Yep. And so this is that's that's why that spot actually matters. This that is spot like needs to be reflected as a false convergence. Right. A reflection of a true convergence. There is a true convergence and a false one. The true one is undefinable. The false one is definable. Right. It's quite a bit of mental gymnastics, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think actually, in the way he's drawn it, it all a lot of it overlaps sloppily. But there is actually I think a, it's just sloppy. There is actually <laughs> a point. Yeah, that's what the star is supposed to represent, right? But Sloppiness. There is a point, I think, actually, which mathematically is uh, outside of all of this, this, well, the circles. Well, if you look at Escher drawings, he does the same thing. Because uh, as you converge towards the center, it's impossible to differentiate anything. I'll show you. Hmm. Word. Didn't do it. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, what was the last thing we said? I don't know. I have to remember. 
Oh, uh, yeah, why this is all important, really. That's a good topic. And uh, where authority comes from, authority comes from its own structure. <laughs> right. This is the breakaway civilization thing again, the uh, great axial of war. And the thing is about authority being its own structure. If you know, if you remember the uh, previous point we made about um, how um, uh, growing up is being stunted, right? Uh, this is the very development that is being stunted. Uh, this kind of self-actualization, self-realization, in which uh, you will become your own uh, government, if you will. Uh, it's very much stunted because uh, people who enjoy positions that uh, are given to them through the system for governing others uh, don't necessarily see the challenge coming from uh, uh, a self-actualized person as valid. Well, when you say enjoy and think about affect and how the system rewards, by enjoy, I mean rewards addicted. corruption even. But uh, uh, by enjoy, I mean uh, uh, addicted to the function itself. Um, so the processing dopamine. Of, yeah, the dopamine hit that one gets uh, from processing other people in accordance to a particular uh, set of rules, um, and 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 feeling like they're doing the correct. So job. you're talking about a low level like bootstrap basically for this type of behavior, mm -hmm. even. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but the problem that one faces immediately is that if yourself if you're actualizing yourself, then, then the governing uh, mechanisms of the system that um, has been in place to to uh, <coughs> sort of stunt the process to begin with isn't going to respond to this kind of uh, uh, department from its procedure. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a particular problem to. Uh, to have to deal with in the entire uh, throughout the whole thing like. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's nice to be in overtime because there's you know like no pressure and everything we're just waiting for a ride here you know as, as stated clearly in text messages as the <laughs> as the situation arises and that I, I can't believe again 500 kilobytes a second and YouTube is complaining and probably the video it doesn't the video doesn't even matter at least the audio is okay so yeah. far as I know so far as I know I hope yeah so yeah over time I was just thinking like this may become my favorite segment of yeah. the uh, thinking after the, the cast fact. well you know you know, put it put it on uh, yeah free for be right back screen and then just have a free for all yeah, well, I mainly am more interested in, 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 in explaining why... What do you want to do with this live stream? In particular, I want to do with it is explain where authority comes from and, and, and why it isn't... George either, Carlin style? <laughs> why it isn't either of us and I, I, I really am troubled. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm troubled by a certain individual. This is actually the... This is, one, this is one of your traumas, okay? So I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. I'm traumatized by... The, um, this is the accusation of being a cult leader and all this kind of stuff. Basically. Yeah, it's... That's where that comes from. And it's perfectly valid. And we need to figure out these dramas for future's sake. Mm -hmm. If anybody um, going through these types of organizational structures or struggles, however you want to call it. Well, for one, I'm, tr I'm still trying to figure out how the hell did I end up in that particular demographic considering the fact that nobody follows me. You know, like, you'd think if you have a cult, right, you'd have followers. And, <laughs> and I'm still kind of... That normally is one of the constraints. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who the fuck is following me. Because, I mean, if, if we were to take these conversations as, a, as an example of a follower... Well, actually, it's the people um, making the accusation, because they've, 
that's what this, this mirage appeared in their in their sights and uh, essentially you, you've become bigger than life in their own eyes and all, well that's the, I, no, the that, that's signs. more of the irony of it <laughs> uh, uh, that I've gained far more fame in in that negative space uh, somehow despite the fact that I, I still can't figure out who the fuck is following me all right, um, so, so, so why that is a problem is that it becomes impossible for me to say anything. Uh, my my uh, communication channels are, are damaged through it. Well, isn't this like the problem of drama and having different factions and stuff and people being able to just sabotage each other's image by making accusations or this and that? And... And well, this sure. is this is where membership really like the guild is going to recognize itself and each other. We don't we don't have to um, put in any effort even towards that end. But I'm but I'm it's but only I'm, towards participants that I'm we would still have try, to. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the context. Again, this is what comes back to my uh, uh, understandings and uh, context. As fundamental as I find it, I, I, I don't, I'm not able to grasp, mm -hmm. like I can grasp this super, superficial shit, but I'm not able to grasp is like, why is there no movement past it? Anybody can say, hey, you're, you're, you're doing X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z, but it's like, it makes no sense to me that like after the fact they can't say uh, because of because of and because of that this that and the other thing right it's like it's well okay I can accept the fact that I'm you know like mm -hmm. uh, this is the speech impediment you're talking about? Yeah, People like... People not able to really understand you just because of your kind of perspective? Or what yeah, it become, it, 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 it's really, like, it's disheartening in the fact that yeah. I'm not going to be able to actually change the, the, the actual thought process from that reason alone. It's, it hasn't... It's not connected to it. Um, my mm -hmm. quote unquote superior I have a superiority well, complex but this is ingress this is ingress dude this is ingress right here I should finish the sentence okay, I, finish I, I do have a superiority complex but it, it isn't geared in terms of uh, superiority to other people in any capacity uh, it's just a matter of judging opinions if anything it's like confidence we'll call it yeah <laughs> uh, I'm okay with that and again back to our point about um, fiat the pro this is the problem of fiat you have to appear confident otherwise you you're not a thing you're not part of a viable system unless you appear confident it's the catch-22 the chicken and the egg do yeah, I have but, a viable but, system and confidence or does it catch on and it really is a system which is a which is a fair assessment and and confidence is like cool why do I have this confidence um, yeah it's a fair question but right. uh, but to challenge me on the fact that uh, that I have it is just as fundamentally odd to me it's because the challenge is against the signal itself not about any of the content which you provided and that's the yeah it's, the, it's a matter of protocol the, I guess. this is fiat whatever but the protocol seems to dis d diminish um, further capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a ge I guess that's my fundamental refusal to uh, to abide by that. Look, I, I, I just won't do it. Right to bend, I, and I felt that way. And what my point I was going to lead into it was about that this is ingress as well. That ability to give artifacts in a way that's comfortable to the other, even if you feel like it violates your whole being. And, and with even social 
um, dysmorphisms yeah. on top of all of that just to, to cater to. Yeah. Right? Yeah, There's right. a little stack that you're up against that it just makes you feel ashamed of yourself almost even just to bend that far backwards to communicate with somebody. But we've got the, the four angles I of think, ingress, I which th- makes I think really per- perfect I, sense. You know what? You, you're, you're hitting on a uh, very interesting point. I, I refuse to bend over backwards kind of thing. I, don't, yep. I don't, just don't do it. And uh, I think that's where uh, the conflict really is coming in. Right. Now, considering ingress alone, there's probably concessions we would never normally even think to give, unless until we've learned about. Oh the, no! The uh, uh, absolutely, that, like you know? uh, the concession. Like we know how to at least w- uh, from a high level view, how, I mean, to, how to do it. Okay, look anecdotally wise, the the, the conce- concession wise. Pat Robertson, let's let's use him as a Our great as, as a great example. Favorite. Well, where where do we come from versus where we were? Like you and I started making, <laughs> you and I started like making making a day out of making fun of him. And it was like from the atheist type of perspective. Yeah, um, like like this is back in the day, like just loving back. how how Pat Robertson looked like he was shitting himself whenever he was praying, and like everything that he said was hilarious. Yeah. Look, we <laughs> just because blast. it's so ridiculous those ridiculous Christians and yet here we are what 20 years later <laughs> yep yeah. um, fundamentally going okay well still making fun of him but we know much better now we know why he's doing <laughs> what he's doing <laughs> and we, we know we can't help himself either mm-hmm. like uh He's not right, but he's not wrong. He's 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 not right in everything he says about the material world is fucking bullshit. But he's not wrong in that he understands the human psychology. He he's he's a sorcerer, if you will. He's um sure. He he's a psychiatrist. He's a he's a marketer. He's a He's every force of, uh, you know, lizard brain manipulation that you can think of. And, on top of it all, he doesn't know what to do outside of that function. Like, but this is the way that the, the market machine traps you, sort of. And, and the niches that these corporations can, mm-hmm. uh, can fit into. Uh, by the way, we were sounding great. I got a message that was sounding good. Are there any beers? Telegram. Left? Oh, there are, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, oh, just the uh, SOTS. Somebody talked to me on SOTS. Will it take you to pack? It's very fast. <laughs> Please, they're saying the audio is fine. That's what I heard. <laughs> Uno momento.
What did we talk about? <coughs> transition? Yes, the transition. Have you taken a look at it yet? <laughs> I, got yeah, the, uh, I got the appointment coming up on the uh, 19th with uh, Nicole. I've been a member for five years, man. I've been climbing the ranks. No, no, no. She, she's, uh, she's like, I've seen you on my, uh, on the website. So you've been a member for like, what made you decide that side now? I'm like, so I gave her the entire spiel of like, I'm not ready till I'm ready. When I was a kid, I didn't speak until my grandma was worried, and then I started speaking this and full oh, sentences. Yeah. See, there you go. Some life story. Was she related? That's to? true. So this is the basically the topic of reaching out to different networks to different people people most importantly of course um, this is a bit more but who else is working in this in this space in the core I'll call it the core the yeah. core of the guild who is working in the core of the guild so this is actually a really interesting development because this is a um, th this is potentially the window to realize a lot of it um, and move it from a telegram group into um, sure uh, think a lot of things already been done a, a real a, a realized function in which there are so many uh, different pathways different like the pieces of the puzzle well analogy, the piece of the puzzle right? I'm trying to fill into is, is an already existent organization that's missing the part that uh, gives it consensus and it's suffering from the same types of problems and to what give is consensus. Consensus. Consensus yeah. is uh, when you're trying to get people to be on board, and um, the is that problem what it's a lot about like governance. The problem of consensus is that no matter how much, uh, no matter which uh, system you're trying to appease people by, um, especially when it comes becomes democratic is that you uh, are fighting a, uh, an uphill battle of popularity contests. Right. Yeah. It has nothing to do with merit. Which should be especially understood as a problem or a threat it, in, the, it is in the context of mass media and mass propaganda. Be yes. be before we get there, <laughs> before we get there, <coughs> there is a fundamental problem to it. In that it's a consensus consensus based on popularity, not what needs to be done. Right. Yo, yo, so, yo. Where it is? Where is it? A lot. Yeah, yeah. We're in the winding down phase of yeah, the. Uh, what What's your opinion on authority? On what? Authority. Fuck authority. Really. <laughs> Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. <laughs> Would you consider a self-discipline a kind of authority, though? Sure. Yeah, you gotta... Fuck uh, self-discipline. Kind of authority over yourself. So, therefore, what's your opinion on authority? Including self-authority. Uh, Ain't never gonna wipe my uh, ass. It's kind of tricky, because, <laughs> you know, there's... Okay. The whole let, thing, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So. Let, let me ask you another leading question. Um, should authority be genuine or not? What does that mean? Yeah. What, yeah. Well, what you authority uh, in a sense of like, are we, try, are, we, are we trying to uh, uh, fulfill a desire or a need? Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, certain things like laws and things like oh, that need to be enforced. What's the difference? <laughs> Do you need to eat? What's what is the authority behind you needing to eat? Uh, my stomach tells my body I need to eat something. Yep. Do you need to speak English? No. I mean, because, I do because I don't know how to speak English. Right, any because, other the language, authority behind, because the authority <laughs> that to tell you to speak English is fundamentally different than the authority to tell you to you need to eat. Right. right? And then that's, 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 that's where my question about authority comes from. What do you think about it? Like, well, there's a difference between authority and necessity. Hmm. So there's different levels to it, right? Sure. There's legitimate, there's illegitimate. And yeah, when I ask you, like, about... Trick, isn't it? And when I'm asking about, like, uh, um, uh, honest? What did I say? Transparent? No, I didn't say any of those things. 
legitimate authority. Legitimate, yeah. Right. Like, right. Like, when you're talking, like, so when I ask about legitimate authority. And that, legitimate that kind of, means that it, it, it is seen as valid, basically, by whoever it's imposed upon. That's right, what, so like so, that's what know, legitimacy is. And yeah, like a police officer enforcing the law, well, as opposed to your body saying, like, "I need to live." And then you're like, <laughs> a necessity. And then you're like, "Okay, I understand, police officer doing the law. He's doing yeah. his job. That the action is legitimate." But then, but then you right. can because say, you hey. view it as because he's an agent of the state, right? So right. you view it as legitimate. That's but then you can say, "Hey, is his authority legitimate in the fact that he's making me give up my weed, or is that a, well, as long as he's that within the confines of his but but that, that's an authority, but that's an authority to step yeah. outside of that spectrum, right? That's you could like question a, whether it's legitimate to stop somebody or arrest them based on a plant. Well, but existing laws dictate what they can and can't do. But what is legitimate is up to the legislature, which is supposed to represent the people. And the right. people feel bad about something, a law, then they change it. Sure. And that so it's no that's longer so legitimate, and it has to become legitimate. It's, it, it, it's actually the typical circle of, like, if it's broken, you know, like, in, the, in, in between those parts of, like, you know, like, these people are not fulfilling these people's requests to begin with, then why the fuck are they there? Right, kind of thing. Sure. We're not trying to like. Uh, we're not trying to open up America again or anything. Hey, this, is, this is all obvious. We we never, the police. We never talked it's all, about. It's uh, all the obvious stuff, really. Sure. Like our model, and it compared to certain countries. Like we should compare our model to different countries, right? Uh, whew. you're you're gonna get a hell of a shit ton of arbitrariness in there. It's well, gonna be like very all up in the wind kind no, of thing. No, but that this is um, this is. I come inc- from Israel. Hey, that's supposed to be biblical. This is called <laughs> intersecting a narrative, right? This is what is in the concrete of many minds that this is mm. what a country is. Sure. It's either this country, that country, that one. So compare your model with theirs. Yeah, this yeah, is no, intersection no, this, of narratives. Yeah. No, you have to do the. You have to do this, uh, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah, I know you would understand that. <laughs> You have to do this, obviously. Uh, um, that's that's why the co- the interface to everything has to be corporate to begin with. You have to like sell your idea, blah 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 blah. Always, mm-hmm. you have to have a product. So, right. so yeah. the interface is always about having a product. It's See, never that's why we have to make a corporation because it's it's pushed to that. We have to supply the thing that we are demanding ourselves. I guess. So the idea of relig- separation of religion and state is a fucking joke. <laughs> well, no, it is because <coughs> if you think about, it, <coughs> I think it should be separate. It, no, it should be. Don't get me wrong. There, it should be separate. But uh, it, the, that idea comes on the cusp of mis- of a misunderstanding of what religion is. If you th- if way you th- to control the masses. Yeah, no. If you exactly, if you think of religion as just what the people currently believe to be true right if you just if you just Not use if you just but. use that as the criteria if that that's this is lot. the way that if, if that's that's includes science that includes science exactly mm-hmm. if you believe the religion that is simply the 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 uh, institution to perpetuate what people believe to be true then mm-hmm. all that happened is that the priests left the church right and joined the professional organization so this is still the priest class but this is a transformation of the priest class yeah from so one so, area of, of so instead of your laws being dictated to you down from over god quote unquote the laws are dictated to you down through certification and you know like um schooling and all of these uh, different uh, organizations that that fuel uh, yeah this is our plateaus of commodification sure different if, layers of complexity that civilization goes through over but if time. you if you notice something particular about this situation is that if you are not teaching your children to be uh, participants in these systems to become quote unquote unemployable right they, yeah. uh, okay, if you if you don't teach you them, you can't just to, raise a hippie you, as a kid, right? The, well, yeah, you need to teach them responsibility. So right. the whole thing. But 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 what does responsibility mean in this context? It means being a being a good worker, being a good uh, um, professional, right? right? Obtaining your certification, going through the ritual of schooling, going through the ritual of testing, and going through this. the ritual of 
you know, being cert certified. Sure. And now, now you're the valid agent of reality to dictate how things should happen. Well, it's got to be self so we've, perpetuating, we've, we've, right? Yeah. So we've changed. So we've changed it being the church to be to it being mm -hmm. the school. Right. But did we change the way we believe things? Not really. We've changed that. We've changed what we the call authority things. structure. We we changed what we call what what who's responsible for what, mm. the names of the the positions. Right. So, priests transforms to the professional as a label. Right. Yeah. And like now you're got to be the professional. Oh, well, they they and know now what they're you doing. Be ordained, <laughs> and now you got to be ordained through their rituals. Sure. Whether they make sense or not into the system into the church yeah, this into being employable actually, into being a participant well I don't know if you can relate that to the church but this if, you, the if, whole, if you wanted to be wait, a priest no, 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 as a professional wait, guess, if you're a sure, hippie right. if you're a hippie unemployed, an unemployable hippie right if you reject the professional caste of individuals if you reject uh, uh, saying okay I need a certificate for this for that for the other thing nobody's listening to you right Okay. Because you are not educated, and you've got well, the if you situation. Well, you want to fit into their system where regulations and things exactly, like that are exactly. required. Then of course they're not going to fit in. Like, I, 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 oh. But the pro but, and, and here's here's the dividing line. All of that requires is a signature for somebody else. So whether mm. you do know or do not know, has more to do with. But who that's you, a corrupt who, system you're talking about. Then if that's all it takes. It immediate, but that that that, that immediately it is follows. A corrupt system. It, it immediately follows. Whatever it is, man. It follows immediately right from the start. As soon as you start making it about labels, about certification, about you know you belong to this class or not that class. As soon as you start making it about that, people game it. People game it. People like. I know you, you can tell me I am that, therefore I can come to this system with my label from you. <coughs> right. And more, more often than not, well, what is that label? The size of the bank account. Or the, size of, the size of the transaction, really. Okay. If it, it all gets relegated to some fucking number. And when you do that, when you when you can get a signature transaction for a label, you can. Well, what, what's you, your you, the, counter? You you got. What's in, the other way then? Well, okay, the other way is like you cannot pay for it. Well, you need to follow the steps. People do the and, hours, do the and knowledge, people, and people, pass your tests. And people need to know that, yeah, you know what the fuck you're talking about. And how many people are uh, are, will, are willing to subject <coughs> themselves to that? Not a lot. Anybody that goes to school? People don't want to be honest. <laughs> Anybody that goes to school and wants to function in society is going to have but, to but, but, but here's the thing, here's the thing. The, the, the system as it is now, it games people to like take advantage of everything, right? So anybody you will try to so anybody you will uh, entice that into, they're gonna game the system for themselves anyway. So even if you have the perfect system, quote unquote, sure, it's gonna get fucked up. <coughs> maybe. No, uh, not maybe. Like entropy. Like you, 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 I, I, know, I know you. You're, you're, you're. There's you a, like your science. There's wait. You there's like your a science. threshold between systems which become. Crusted th machinery that people get chopped I'm up not into. A, I'm not a good speaker, by the way. And so. the individual right experience of judging these systems as is this continually good for me and my environment and everything. It's called qualifications, though. Yeah. Did you go to school? Did there's you pass this whole, the test? There's this divide, though, between like you can have somebody who's like a totally excellent master at something, but. Yeah. He doesn't have the qualifications to get into the. Maybe he went from a one country to another. Sure. And this country doesn't accept that qualification. Yeah, like say doctors or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So you got like dental surgeons doing like hygiene stuff locally. Right. You know. Dated by where you live, so. Yeah. Why, if, if you want to work in our system, you need to pass our standards. Why? What's I don't understand where, that's a hard thing to grasp. Well, that's, I think that's the point of a state, is to want to control and make regulation that everything's going to be cool and smooth. 
We're not going to allow <coughs> external forces of who knows what the fuck they are just into our system. This is the wall. This is a shelter of society itself. Right. To say, yeah, we have our standards. You got yours, whatever. But do our thing. And you can I'm not, have partnerships. I'm not that. I mean, you can have partnerships is. between countries or like institutes to say like okay this is roughly equivalent to that so you're saying should they develop like a universal standard for say healthcare depends, or things like no, that no no but it depends how good the relationship between a country to to want to even do that like usa sure. and canada to say okay i can do a university course here and still have like credentials are recognized over here that'd be nice <laughs> yeah that'd be nice i mean even for trades though it could, the laws could be different state to state province to province like I mean, so, if you're called a doctor in Canada are you not called a doctor fuck, in I exhausted US? all my supply I, I am serious about what I said by the way interesting point I'm not going to take them all by the way like, no way just you wait It'll la every last one will be gone <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that much of an asshole um, <coughs> yeah it's a uh, What is? Wait, what are you talking about? I uh, forget. Give us a topic. What was the topic? I don't know, but you had some you want to add to it. But we uh, did I, pretty I, good on our own there. I say, I... So we're saying, like, there I'm should be a universal standard for everything. Look, I'm hung up on authority because, <laughs> because of, uh, like A, I talk the way I talk. Or authority. among good relationships. <laughs> like, y enemies aren't going to have standards together. Mm. Put it that way. I actually, well, I actually, I actually find uh, this statement, you know, in the in the Bible, it says, "Love your enemy," to be uh, absolutely horseshit, because I don't think it's a correct translation for anything. The two things are wrong with this statement. If you're loving somebody, how the fuck are they your enemy? Mm. You can't do it. Well, what makes them your enemy? As soon as you do that, there's no enemy. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, I mean, you can you can find common common grounds with anything. The label with the act makes no sense. Is all I'm saying. Sure. Seems a little contradictory. It's 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 like you cannot love your enemy. You can only dis you can only remove enemies from <laughs> the spectrum of your is it, like imagination is entirely. Sure. You can take it as, like, you know, don't hold the grudge, basically. Uh, stop that category from happening, in other words? Yeah. Enemy. So, no, th <laughs> this is the correct way to, inter to, to go about it, like, interpreting the, the verses. But this is not what people are understanding at all. Right. They're going about, like, thinking, oh, I got enemies to love. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> they don't like, have You can't for me. keep them as your enemies, you moron. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is my. Uh... What's What's that other one though? Like the, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's another kind of. Yeah. One that makes you think. I think I think you've That's gotten yourself right. into a conundrum there, buddy. <laughs> That's more right though. I, no, it isn't because if you're against the be, same be, be, person be, be, because you, you should allies, be able to, right? Well, no, no, you should be able to step up even up. above that and yeah. be like, "Oh, the shit, this is a theater, and I should be able to resolve it in terms of fucking actors and players rather than fucking enemies and friends." Right. Because at that point, what is it? It's just a fucking stage. Yeah. Yeah, I like that plateau stage. Well, you can, there is no evil. There is no good. Like those are con those are things that. Dude, does, does anybody ever think of themselves as evil? Really? No. That evil. doesn't happen. <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, certain people so. can recognize that they're not good people. Certain people can recognize that they're not following the rules, but they don't think of themselves as evil. Maybe they do. It, the, the psychopath, even the psychopath does not think of themselves as evil when they're murdering. They're well, thinking of themselves. Their they're, they're, they're talking the, too, in their in their frame of mind. It's usually like playing a role in a bigger stage of some sort, which has nothing to do with reality, sure. But the evil part doesn't factor. They're I like guess. completing some sort of story. It which would is well, maybe up. they have noble intentions. Yeah. It's fucked up. I don't know. 
Uh, if that evil label was applied, it probably would have stopped the behavior from happening. <laughs> well, and then that's where societal values and morals Funny come thing in. is, is that if, experimentally wise, if there, were, if, if a psycho person with psychopathic traits is being able is being made to think about their situation proactively instead of reactively they're far more uh, able to uh, do so as a normal person than any than other than not right but right? that's that's where the, the so, values so, so come f- in so like for the psychopath raised, right? for, so for the psychopath Future what they're finding is that they have to be engaged um they have to be engaged uh from the get-go in the, in the em- empathetic trait to, to, to come up with the solution because they wouldn't do so immediately. But they wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily have that and it's not like something so that means a so it means a psychopathic person is not necessarily evil. They could be made uh, to consider those the, the consequences of their actions through a different method. They yeah. just would in our current society, they wouldn't be able to get access to making those kinds of decisions because nobody gives a shit. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, this that's is what, like, one. in tribal societies, this shit comes up a lot less. They just kill those people. Don't, or they, they, don't, they don't go that far. Person make it if they st- if they start, they don't go get far, and if they don't start, <coughs> they, it's because they have other um, aspects that are like making them this is not a good idea right but certain people they're not born with that though. Mm. So. this is not an argument to say they are the, this is this that's, is just that's this like is, assuming everybody's born mm. the same way but this is assuming this. nobody thinks they're evil to begin with and so if, right. if and if that that trait can be directed into a more uh, positive light it can it can actually happen you don't have to wind up as a serial killer just because you're born with those with a lack of traits of some sort. Right. Nature sure. versus nurture. Yeah. And in our society, we actually nurture the opposite, and so because of that, like get more of a serial killer um, outcome than the other, or right. the ruthless uh, or the ruthless uh, ex CEO or whatever that doesn't give sure. a shit about society or. You know. Right. Well, yeah. And they teach you all that in school, like ethics and things like that in regards to... They teach you that this is the way to succeed, to step over people, like step on people. Where is your Valera? Yeah. Here. Let's go. Good to go. Yeah. All right, now I'm under your team. Well, a good topic to end on. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Dust buds. Are you actually leaving these with me? Peace out. The what? Yeah, fuck yeah. It's here. All right. Yeah, but we um, uh, conclude this session. Your, uh, do you have a 